you don't want us to do. Because you just can't. If someone camel bites you on the back of the arm, there's no way you can't lash out. It's fucking. Do you ever remember the. Um, we're on. live. So we're live. Our first um, Champions League game. Um, Manchester City against Real Madrid. Second leg at the Etihad tonight. Uh, finally poised after an incredible game 3 3 last week in um, the Bernabeu. You don't think goals. Josh is with me tonight. We're going to go through this. We'll go through the teams in a bit. Um, interestingly, Josh has just said he thinks it's going to be nil-nil. Um, just he... just on that, just with City big games, I just think it's cagey, it's tense. You look at the City-Arsenal game this year, um, with it being such a tight scoreline, Pep's, ex Pep's history in these big games, I think I'm going to put it out there and say it'll be under two and a half goals. Oh, no, I, I can't see anything but goals here. I just think the way both teams are playing... I think they both had the best on the front foot. I don't think um, I don't think the game last last time out does anything other than make you feel like there's going to be goals. So I'd be definitely going over two and a half goals. I do fancy City to win. I've looked at the teams there. It, it's probably City's first choice lineup, if I'm honest. Um, obviously, Kyle Walker's back. Edison's back. De Bruyne into the start tonight. Jack Grealish back in from the start tonight. Um, obviously, Real Madrid look as as you know, as strong as they can be with what they have available, albeit they don't have that kind of recognised number nine and it looks like Bellingham's going to be pushed into that um, advanced role. So the best of the best playing each other, obviously Pep and Guard, uh, Ancelotti on the other side of that. Um, but I do expect City to progress tonight at home and I've got a funny feeling Arsenal are going to get knocked out in Munich. I don't know why. Yeah. Munich aren't having a great season, but I feel like Arsenal's result at the weekend... Uh, I, I just feel, I always felt that, I don't know what it was about Arsenal, but I just always felt, and, and it must be the all or nothing documentary, I just think they're full of shit, I can't explain that to you, I think Arteta's full of shit, and I just think it's a, a very, very weak group, even though it's it's having a great season, I, I just knew, I, I just knew when when the push comes to shove, um, did find a way of losing, and, and you know, might be wrong, they might win tonight in Munich and they might go on to win the league, but I, I just don't feel that they've got all the components needed to um, to to overthrow, which is probably the best side we've seen in recent history, you know, this this current Manchester City side. Yeah, OK. A little bit of uh, early activity in the in the chat room, in the forum. A few people on the aisle, but a couple of people, they fancied the, uh, the Bayern Munich and Madrid double. Bit of a shock result tonight. Uh yeah, I mean, you know, at, at this stage of the Champions League, is anything a shock? You know, you're talking about the best teams in the world. Mm. You know, at this point, once you get into these knockout stages, quarterfinal, semi-final, etc. You know, last night I thought Barcelona were cruising through up until, uh, uh, you know, the, Aranjo getting sent off. They, they were two two goals up in the tie after uh, Rafinha's goal. Um, and, and really looking like they were going to win easily, kept the ball off, then PSG was struggling to, to organise the press, and then one moment changed it, you know, the, the ref gives a free kick just outside the box, but sends Aranjo off, and then you just see PSG grow from strength to strength, you know, second period they took over, um, and, and obviously managed to dump Barca out, and then you look at the other semi-final, obviously Dortmund being 2-1 down, and, and obviously beating Atletico Madrid, I fancied Madrid to get through last night, um, mm -hmm. And I look at that semi-final, PSG Dortmund, you'd have to favour PSG. But I think the winner of the European Cup is going to come from, from this side of the draw. Whether it's mm. Arsenal Bayern, we'll find out. But obviously, uh, you know, City Madrid, I would expect the winner of this to progress beyond Arsenal or beyond Bayern, whoever gets through. What's it, um, have you, do you still kind of keep in contact with people in French football? Because obviously the big statements are they really want this Champions League like they're, they're not really asked about the French League they've got a bit of a negative attitude haven't they towards football I think especially in the Euro European competitions maybe it's the it's it's the ownership flooding down to the team that this obnoxiousness that we like we don't really give a fuck we just want you know well we, it's part of their kind of you know the, the, the global position of raising Paris Saint-Germain and making them you know a, a, a European superpower I think they've done that financially but obviously to be considered a European superpower, you have to win a European Cup. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they've chased that, you know, spent fortunes on, you know, some of the best players in the world, obviously some of the biggest names in the world. And it's eluded them. You know, they've mm -hmm. been to a couple, have they been a couple of finals? Did Tuchel lose a final? 
Um, and the problem they've got is there's only one French side that's ever won a European Cup, which is obviously Marseille. Monaco have come close a few times. Lyon have had good runs in it. You've obviously had San Etienne, who were a powerhouse in the past. But Bernard Tappy and obviously um, Basil Bowley's goal for Marseille is the only time a French club, you know, when you think about the French as powering world football mm. historically, you know, when you think about the players they produce, you know, some of the best that's, that's ever played the game have come from France. And yet they've only ever won one European Cup, mm. um, so it does tell you that you know the strength of their league, but also you know it's become the the drive and aim as it is. I think for Real Madrid, I think Real Madrid and Barcelona win the league. It's important to them, but I think winning the European Cup is is the main. England is a bit of an outlier in that regard. You would argue Bayern Munich just come off the back of winning eleven titles on the spin until the Harry Kane case kicked in. Um, you would almost say they prioritise winning the, the Champions League, the European Cup, because you know their league, domestic leagues aren't, aren't that strong. Weirdly, in England, if you were to win the European Cup but not win the league, like Liverpool did when they finished fourth and obviously had the world's luckiest final when they were 3-0 down and won, four, uh, won on penalties against that Ancelotti Milan side, the big thing that was labelled at them was they weren't the domestic champions. And I always see that logic. So how can you be the cock of your school uh, the cock of the world if you're not cock of the school. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're like the third hardest person in your school, but you're going around saying you're the world champion. It's like, no, there's three lads in your school. Punch your head in. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, down to, it's down to obviously the Premier League being leaps and bounds ahead of well, the Champions the other League. The European football. Isn't the Champions League, is it? Because it's the second, third and fourth place league as well. Yeah. So it's actually, it's actually, you know, when it was the European Cup, it was all champions. It was the best from every single division. So the only way you could qualify for it was to become the domestic champion. Obviously, the money and ev everything else has come in and dilute that down. Next season, we're going to see the Champions League change format again to a kind of league format. Yeah. What's, your, what's your thoughts on that? It's just about more games for the bigger clubs to stop them doing a European breakaway, I would imagine. And, you know, they added two extra games into the, to guaranteed money for the clubs that qualify for the Champions League. So the clubs aren't going to turn it down. Mm. You know, the, 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 the domestic uh, leagues can't really do much about it because if they stand up to it too much it'll only in, encourage them to chase to this break European off, yeah. breakaway league more. Do you think the fans could have had any say in it? I don't think people give a fuck about fans anymore, if I'm mm. honest with you. You know, you just look at all the big clubs in our country have just raised season ticket prices in the cost of living crisis. Yeah. They don't give a shit. All they're bothered about is, is money through the, money through the turnstiles, money through the cash register. You know, they dress it up, oh, we care about our fans. We, we, they don't. I mean, uh, case in point, Sky don't care, but you, TNT don't care because look how many women are on the programme. They're not bothered about quality. Mm -hmm. um, they want to do the right thing and be DEI. And I think the clubs are the same. You know, they've gone down this woke route, but also they've gone, that, more importantly to them, the most important colour to the football clubs is the colour green. Mm -hmm. Fucking money. Fucking shame, the, the beautiful game you love. Just it is and it isn't. Do you know what I mean? In terms of it, it's just become a big multi billion pound industry you know it isn't no longer the communal local clubs and you know rags to riches stuff it's now you know big business and and unfortunately you know when you get big money and big business you get political idea and all of a sudden it's corrupted and mm -hmm. you know you only have to look at the people who who run the organizations fifa corruption everywhere you know just had the world cup in russia just had a world cup in qatar <laughs> <laughs> anything stinks of uh, people getting brown envelopes. It's those two World Cups. Where's the next? They're going to have one in Saudi Arabia in 2036 or something yeah. like that. It's just, in, you know, and again, you know, human beings, someone offers you a million pounds. That might be enough to turn your, uh, uh, um, your vote towards them. And someone offers you 10, it might be. <laughs> someone offers you 50, it, it, it definitely will be. Yeah. Um, it's like this tit, Lescott. Why, why is he on? Why is he on this? See that fucker? When, when they won the league, obviously I can remember it, I got sent off. He shit his kecks in the game. I've never seen a man fall apart as much as the fucking Klingon. And I know he's combing his hair from his arsehole. I know he's combing his hair all over the fucking Klingon signs on the front of his head. But that is one cheeky bastard turning up on a, a Manchester City on here. He should never turn up at that stadium again. Because if he if they'd have checked his slips after that game, they'd have been full of shit because he shit his pants. He'd gone physically. <laughs> And only for Aguero and the stoppage time and, and probably me getting sent off, he wouldn't have a fucking league title. Where was we playing there? And he's a grass. Don't and this is not the um, the easel talking. This is a, a local brewery from uh, Liverpool. 
Um, Neptune Brewery, little pale ale here that we've got. Quite nice, actually. Yeah. Ha Haitian Goddess. Anyone Hopefully could it's got no cannibalism in it. Anyone could uh, mistake that as a kind of monster. Don't know anyone does, drinks that yeah, shit. It does, yeah, but listen, it's it's quite a nice little pale ale, only four percent, but it'll get us through the game here. Yeah. yeah, I was. Uh, Light I was... citrus flavors of grapefruit, pith, and lemon, softened with gentle peach notes. So um, get nice yourself some. Uh, Just get yourself them. Yeah, some... I'm on the. Uh, You're on the, on the Julian's Peronis, Peronis. Yeah. Well, he had a choice between Peroni and Madri in the shop, and I do like a Madri, but. Madrid. Want, wanting City to win, it's a Madrid bevy, isn't it? It is Madrid, yeah. It is Madrid. I can't, be, I can't be cheering City on yet when I'm drinking fucking it'd be Madrid's finest. It, it'd be, this is what would be really interesting for me. Really, really interesting. So let's say Madrid, hypothetically, Madrid, Madrid progress tonight. Obviously, Madrid then go to play um, the winner of Arsenal, Bayern in the other semi. Madrid get to the final and PSG knock out Dortmund. So Mbappe's last game for PSG could be against yeah. Madrid, yeah. his future club. Where does his allegiances lie? Do you know your last game for Paris Saint Germain is going to be against the team you're about to sign a five year deal on, seven million pounds a week, whatever he's going to get? Yeah. At, at like, oh, he's from is, one, is, isn't he? Is your legacy, this one I mean, is your legacy going to be with PSG? Hmm. Like, what do you, you know think on, I mean? his, on his overall attitude, though? Mbappe is obviously his unbelievable talent. But you'd probably say Ian Bellingham folding on the, on, on the pitch. Haaland's maybe the, 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 the top players in the world right now, but it kind of feels like he's down tools, doesn't he? He's obviously being public about him leaving Paris. Does that, that, that tells me if they do get, if this does happen, they do get Real Madrid in the final, he downs tools in that final. I, I think it's tough to question his professionalism. Do you know what I mean? No matter what, you, you know, you want to add medals. So if you're Mbappe there, you're perfect. You know, don't forget, he's a Frenchman. Your perfect send off there is leaving a mark in Paris. You know, no one can question you if you if you walk out off the back of delivering in a European Cup. Um, Real Madrid have got fourteen, so a fifteenth one's you know, the the thing for you then is if you go in next season as Mbappe and you've they've already you know you've thrown one in and they've won the European Cup, where'd you go next year? Because you've got to win the European Cup just to get to level par. Otherwise, they'll say, well, we were better off without you and the money we were having to pay for you. So actually, it'd be in Mbappe's interest, firstly as a professional to win it, but secondly because it gives him a lower bar or something to win in his next couple of years at Madrid. So I think it's difficult. You know, is he massively motivated to play in the French league at the minute? You know, I haven't watched enough of them live to, to say he's down tools or not. It must be frustrating for him in terms of, you know, last season, a couple of seasons ago, whatever, you're playing with Lionel Messi and Neymar and then, you know, every, every other season, you know, it seems like your team's ripped up and there's a new manager in and, I can imagine the Qataris um, knowing he's leaving to Madrid and all the s saga around that won't have been, you know, good for his mental health and good for, you know, playing good football. But again, he scored a key goal like, last night. You know, I, I thought, um, I, th I think since Mb uh, um, Mbappe's kind of become the superstar and Messi's left and Neymar's left, I, I do think I've seen a better uh, leadership style in, in Killian. Um but again, you know, he's going to go to Real Madrid and arguably, you know, you can't see. When you look at that side, you're going to have Jude Bellingham, Rodrigo, Vinicius Jr. Don't forget they've signed the young mm. Brazilian boy, Hendrik, who, who I don't think, I'm going to have got, I've, I've said this, I don't think he's as good as what they all think he is. I think he's a bit of a dump truck for his, I don't think he moves right. But look, what do I know? I'm only fucking, I'm only ex Bristol Rovers and ex Fleetwood manager, but I just don't think he, I don't, I don't think he's as good as what Wayne Rooney was at the same age. They said, they said that about Vinny though, Vinicius Junior. But he moves, Vin, Vinicius Junior moves correctly. Like he's, he moves right. I just look at this Endrick and he's like seventeen or something, and he looks very, very square in the hips, very, very bulky in the hips. Romario. Yeah, but Romario, but like he doesn't play. Kind of, he does remind me of Mario, but doesn't kind of play in that spot. Maybe he evolves that. Mm. But what's the, you know, what? Why are they buying Mbappe if Mbappe is not going to go right through the middle in the number nine spot? Like, where's he going to play? Because Vinicius plays on the left, mm. and I would imagine, you know, Rodrigo will play down the right, or sometimes Valverde plays there. I I don't see any any other thing than Mbappe playing right through the guff for them. Um, and then where does Hendrik play? You know, you got Tuchemani, you got Valverde, you got Bellingham. He's, you know, Tony Cruz is still there. Might be his last season. Does it change anything in your defence tonight? Being interested to see how Grealish does, especially with Cole Palmer's emergence. You know, 
I still think Grealish is um, a, a certain starter for England in the Euros if he's fit and in form. Um, I think there's a couple of weak links in the Madrid side. I think uh, Nacho, the captain's one. Farl and Mendy can be got at. Tony Cruz's legs aren't quite once once they were, and and the goalkeeper for me, Courtois being out. You know, Edison's back for City tonight. Mm. L- Lukin is or Lewin, the Ukrainian boy who's in goal. You know, it, Lunin, if, yeah. if, if there's a weakness in the team selection today, I think it's in the Madrid side. I think Manchester City's starting eleven today is a lot stronger than and a lot more balanced uh, than than Real Madrid's, and I expect them to qualify quite comfortably. Yeah, do you think they'll play? Obviously, they'll keep the playing possession deep don't they Madrid so they're happy to keep the ball in their in their third um, this is where I'm thinking about there being no goals I don't think City will press too hard tonight I don't I certainly don't think they'll start the game pressing I think it'll be a bit of a chess game for the first maybe the first third I, I of the game think, I, I, yeah m- maybe but you, you know yourself the first 20 minutes of games Champions League quarter final you have no choice in the intensity you mm. know the game will either be right at it right out the gate the two teams will meet centre of the centre of the pitch and just go basketball mm. style hammer and tongue I don't think either team's capable or wants to really be because it's not doesn't best suit them mm. to sit and kind of absorb pressure I don't think Madrid will want to come away from home and allow, allow Man City to get a press on them by playing deeper and let the crowd noise build and equally I don't think City will you know, allow Madrid to settle and get a load of passes in, and I think City will come hunting for them. So, I mean, it's is that raining in fucking Manchester again? It's sunny everywhere else. It was just a sprinkler. <laughs> I think it's just a sprinkler. Geoengineering um, there, lad. Have you seen that in Dubai? Yeah, seen yeah. that. Yeah, all the um, all the flooding. Here's, here's a question for you. Obviously, I know you enjoyed your time over in in France at Marseille. You've done an amazing uh, achievement in in. in I know it sounds finishing second, you can't say it's an amazing achievement, but look at the, the squad, Paris had, and he's ran them close, you know, Up with a couple of games to go. the last eight games, yeah. So, you know, when you looked at the squad, Marseille weren't fancied at the beginning of the season, weren't they? So get, obviously getting to second was an achievement for you, because you had Leon, you had Monaco. Sanetti, the, and we're Sanetti good with and Aubameyang and that. that yeah, yeah. other um, teams who were fancied to get in the top four. So we're just, we're just finishing second and getting that entering into the Champions League was the party that wanted to stay there oh absolutely I didn't want to leave I, I, I would have stayed there for my whole career after that I just fell in love with the place and, and, and then with me so I was happy to stay there but obviously you know economic forces I, I was getting paid twice the amount at QPR than I was at Marseille where they stayed and mm-hmm. um, you know I still had three and three and a bit years on that deal so if it had been a year I might have swallowed it but it was just too much money to, you know, to play in the Champions League. Would have been great to play in the Champions League here. The music, obviously, we qualify for the group stages. Mm. So would I have on my CV have played in it? But also would have been about four and a half million, five million quid out. So mm. yeah, I want to hear the Champions League music. But I'm telling you, sitting here as a 41 year old who's now retired, I'm fucking glad I didn't. Yeah. You know, in, in terms of went back to QPR, that that ended up being the playoff final season. So, you know, it was disappointing to leave Marseille, but obviously created great memories, and, and it ended up allowing me to get out of QPR with something good happening. Mm. You know, the, 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 the promotion there was was a real bright spell in a, in a tough period for the club. And then obviously moving on to Burnley, which knowing you is probably one of the happiest I've seen you playing football. Yeah, B- Burnley was, you know, I, I was coming in off people kind of writing me off a little bit. So wherever I went that year, I was, I was primed to go and be successful. And it just happened to fell in with a great dressing room, really good coach, really good coaching structure. Uh, people I liked on and off the pitch, and, and and obviously the fans took to me. So, you know, it was easy in 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 that regard because they were a really good set of lads, really good set of people. So I, I slotted in quite nice there. Um, the only disappointing thing was then I then left to go to Rangers, and that didn't quite work out. It, it kind of softened the blow. The fact that I got back to Burnley before, obviously I got banned by the FA. Um, but again, you know, you, you know, I had, I had some good years, like re, you know, only shorts spells of time at Marseille and Burnley but times I look back on really favourably there's, there's other clubs I was at three and four years at and I, I didn't have I don't have as much fond memories as what I do from them from them yeah. short uh, uh, little stints at clubs yeah so right predictions then what are we going for chaps bets on or I've had a couple of little uh, bets yeah I'm going to go 3-1 City 3-1 City. What are you going for, Josh? I don't know. Like, 
I do think it's going to be cagey, but if you look across the results in the in this in the quarterfinals, even the round before, I think since the away goal rule has gone, it's it's obviously created games with more goals. Teams have got nothing to hang on for. They've actually got to go and win the game. And you know what? I, I don't mind it. I, actually I think don't, that, I, that's a I step forward. I do prefer it in terms of I don't think you should go out after playing all the group stages and you get to the quarters or the semis and you go out even though you haven't lost in terms of you've drawn 4-4 four, four, but you scored a goal away f you scored three away from home like you know what I mean I'm like does that matter you if you lose 5-4 I'm not going to get you out yeah I think this is the way it should be I'm not sure about the changes they're making next season in terms of the table because I do think that's geared towards keeping the big clubs in and giving them an even bigger chance um but um, until they do it and run it, we won't know. Sometimes to try and get better, you have to um, try to change things. And sometimes it makes it worse. Like VAR for me, I think the way we use it's shocking. I think there's a better way of using it. But because they, the way they use it's shocking, I don't believe they should get rid of VAR. I just believe they should alter the way we use it. Yeah. Um, the away goal rule. I much prefer in, it, uh, it, it being out because I, I do feel the better team wins then whether you've scored three away from home or fucking two away from home. You know, you, you've had to win the tie over over uh, two legs. Um, penalties is a tough way to go out, but I do feel that's a better way to go out rather than going out on away goals. Yeah. Doesn't encourage as much uh, shit out of which Plus, I did used to enjoy, by it, the way. Know, teams will go away from home in the first leg and just set up to stifle, take the crowd, you know. Mourinho. I think it makes a better spectacle for the fan, for the neutral, if there's no away goals in there. You know, you can't blame teams for going away and stinking the gaff out, you know, or, or go, you know, to not have, or scoring a goal and then just defending because they've got their away goal. Um, so I do feel it makes better contest, and that's ultimately what we want. We want to see the best take the best on. You don't want one team sitting on the ropes. You want them both standing in the middle of the fucking ring, slugging. That's how I want to see it, which I expect to see tonight. I don't think these two teams can do anything else, especially after the first leg. Agreed. Well, um, on that basis, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. All right. What about Arsenal? I think Arsenal lose in Munich. Um, I think they'll lose 2-1. I've gone 1-1. One, one. 2-1, you're going for 1-1? One, one. I've gone 2-1 City. That's penalties then, isn't it? If that finishes 1-1. One, one. Well, that's the time, yeah. Like, I've gone 2-1 two, two, City. 1-1, one, one, Bayern, Arsenal. Do little double. Okay. 50-1. to one. There's, a, there's a good... Uh, there'd be two away. It'd be decent there, Madrid and Arsenal. But, but that'd yeah. be a decent little... Because uh, mm. they'd both be probably underdogs in, in both well, sides. Arsenal, sorry. Bayern. Who do you fancy? Arsenal, Arsenal and Madrid? And Madrid to go through. Arsenal are like, like just under 2-1. to one. But they're the four to one. Do you know what I mean? I think both of them are like, you know, you've got to, one thing you've got to always remember about Real Madrid, they're the luckiest club on the planet. The second luckiest club, Liverpool, who were, the, who were lucky. But there's one club that, if the gods shine on one team, it's, it's Real Madrid. Um, so, you know, Man City won it last year. Look like they're going to win the league this year. Does it ever go that straightforward? Is the, you know, the footballing gods? Did they did they ever just fucking hand you back to back Champions Leagues? So they're going to have to overcome some adversity. Um, it's just As a Liverpool it's fan, as a Liverpool fan, I would love nothing more for them to go out tonight. Real Madrid, Manchester City. Oh, Man City. Why Real Madrid? Surely, if you're talking about Man United winning titles, and Real Madrid have got you. What if he's got six Champions Leagues and they've got. Fourteen. Yeah. So you're the second to them. Liverpool second to them. We've got six, haven't we? I think you're the second, are you? Yeah, I'm you must sure. be. Must be Real Madrid then. Liverpool. Bayern bit. Munich. I'll have a few, I would imagine. Um, but surely, if you dominant, wanting to be the dominant world champions, you don't want Real Madrid to win it again because City have only got one. Go on. So, what do you think the top three is? I would say Real Madrid have got the most. Yeah. Barca must have seven or eight. No, six. Bayern Munich must have six. Bayern have six. Liverpool must have six. There's another. There's a team in between us and in, Madrid. In between you and Madrid, AC Milan. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Uh, seven. Yeah. Um. I can't see. I can't see. 
um, anything other than City winning here, just based on them teams. Mm. They're at home. They've managed to, you know, get out the burn about with, without having to climb a mountain. They've looked like they've got pretty much as strong a side as they could select. Obviously, Edison and Kyle Walker back is massive. De Bruyne's out there. Bernardo Silva hasn't made the side. He's on the bench, isn't he? Walker a bit Fulton of a... Fulton Rodri, is I he on the so. bench? No. He's starting. He's starting, Silva. Walker who, a bit of a hothead, who's though. He start, where's he starting over? Is he starting on the left-hand side? Uh, sorry, the right-hand side. He's starting on the right. Oh, Folding right. in the 10. Grealish Folding, on the left. All right, yeah, I've got you. Or the Bernardo the could eyebrow. drop in next to Rodri and De Bruyne could be Pepe down the middle. Pep will have a plan, won't he? Pep will have a plan. The final's at Wembley, isn't it, yeah? What do you think of Bellingham in this false nine position for Madrid? That's where he plays now. I, I didn't see kind him like playing free there role. before he went to Madrid, but credit to Ancelotti and Bellingham. He's, he's added another string to his bow, hasn't he? Because you're now looking at England's front line and say, OK, if anything happens to Harry Kane... You know, you do you have to turn to Tony or Watkins? Maybe not if Jude Bellingham's there. And the big problem they're going to have is how do you fit Cole Palmer, Phil Foden, Rice, Bellingham, you know, whoever else we've whoever else throws the cap in the ring between now and the Euros. Gordon, Jared Bowen. Do you know what I mean? In in, in terms of how do you fit them in? I see Bellingham and Rice as a two. Obviously, Bellingham would be the eight, Rice would be the six, and then Palmer in front of them, Foden on the left, Saka on the right. Kane up front. Well, it depends, doesn't it? If you want to play the fucking rigid English way or you just want to go and blow teams out of the water early doors. You just depends play, on the opposition, you, you though, because sometimes you play there. against a really good side. You have to play two holders. Whether you want to fucking play 4 3 3, it has to be a kind of 4 2 3 1, you know, because you have to respect the opponents. And then there's other times where, you know, you can, you know, it's maybe an inferior team and you can be a lot more open and play with two running eights. Do you know what I shit about the coverage? And like, I don't know if you're aware of this when you're watching any live games now. There's literally no build-up. Just loads of adverts. And yeah. then Talk a little shade. little couple of contributions, yeah. There's like actually no in-depth build-up or so. These TFOs, these like, you know, TFOs, do, where they're like, see Marseille do it, seeing the foot, and then it's like, right, we've got to get all these, we've got to get this banner made. Liverpool. Like, why have they got the... Is this a pro... This is a protest against... This Black Flags is a protest against the season ticket prices, isn't it? For them, right? From them raising them. I'm sure it's something. That, I'm pretty sure it's a protest about them. You know, Man City have released the, the ticket prices for next year, and obviously no consideration for the fans. Liverpool have done the same. They don't um, fill it up as it is. So how do you raise the prices? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But the the, the, the um, well, the nudging the prices up. See, that that's got to be a protest. Black flags being waved. That's got nothing to do with Man City, has it? But you know what I mean? You know about the coverage. Have we got you know a, the who's, on the, who's on the commentary? Fletcher. I've been texting him the last few. I texted him last week saying she's killing you, and he's. Uh, he's te I texted him last night. I'm fucking watching. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, there's no point even tweeting about whispering death. She 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 came up with another cracker last night, didn't she? When uh, obviously PSG scored the winning goal, <laughs> tweeted it today. Uh, it's gone absolutely silent in here, except for all the crowd, <laughs> except for all the fucking crowd noise. <laughs> Honest to God. Um, and did, did anyone see a Nuka 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 Low or Nuka Nuka Low coming out today saying she's scared to go to the uh, Stadium? What a fucking idiot. She's made herself look like a oh, fool. She just mugs herself off all the time. Well, she hasn't been relevant, has she, for, well, fucking forever, really, but she hasn't been in uh, any any Daily Mail columns for a couple of days, so. Do you know what I mean? Throw the race car in. There, yeah. sling, sling the race car back in. I'm scared to go in stadiums. The good thing is, the amount of women who've come out and gone, like, I've been going 40, 20 years, I just don't know what you're on about. Mm. Shout out, Astrid Wet. Was she, oh, was she on there, was she, yeah? She, oh, I've seen, yeah, the comments, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've got to be careful with them tramps popping their heads up. Um, but, yeah, it was um, it was noted today, and I'm just like, how pathetic can you get? Like, that. that's the um, that's the standard of punditry. We'll get. We, you can't even remove these people because the distortion of reality. Yeah. Like, in their world, they must think they're good. Like, like no one's around there saying, you shit. And what I like about it is the fucking wig that keeps like all, all the black women wear wigs, don't they? None of their hairs their own. So they all have like do rags underneath with like a, a short back and sides or a big tatty skinhead. And then they have these big mad wigs on. And I'm like, why don't you fucking grow your hair out? And if you've only got a fucking Tracy Chapman short back and fucking <laughs> microphone, then that's all you've got. But like, 
<laughs> Coming in with all this fucking mad air. It's like, get a fuck off me telly. <laughs> Rudiger Ireland for me is the key battle because they were absolutely going happen and tongue first half. Real physicality. Uh, Haaland doesn't mind, it actually looks forward to it. And obviously Rudiger's a, 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 a master of using his body and the dark arts, getting contact on you. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes tonight, Haaland, whether he goes onto Nacho's side or whether he goes and looks for the direct confrontation with Rudiger. But as I say, I just think City's... City's legs in midfield, Tony Cruz doesn't have the legs, but he has Valverde and Camavinga around him, who, who, who are mobile, who can move. Um, but I think if Foden continues the form he's in and they can get him on the backside of Tony Cruz, I think it's going to be a long night for Madrid. Looking forward to this, lads. Come on, Madrid. Yeah, should be a cracker. Should be a cracker. Any City fans in the chat? Hopefully Ireland turns up tonight because he was quiet last week. I think, I think he was too busy having a straightener with Rudiger. He's a mad looking cat though, isn't he? He's crap at footy. Listen, it doesn't really matter, Ireland. does it, if you put <laughs> 50 goals in in 52 games? This is the thing, isn't it? Harry People Kane's think like, like goalkeepers, like, oh, you, have to, you, don't, like, you just have to be a specialist at what you do. Harland, you would say, would not win a soccer skills competition, but you fucking want him as your number nine every fucking single time you have a match because he all knows the where the union no. is. It's not raining at the Etihad, which is a very, very surprising uh, <laughs> outcome because it usually pisses down. I just think it's stronger. Four, four uh, across the back, all big units. That's the strongest they can put out, City. Well, that'll end up with Bernardo will peel inside, Walker will give the width on the outside, Grealish gives the width the opposite side, and that'll end up sliding round to a three and a two. That'll be mm. that'll be either a three with Rodri in front, so a three and a one. Gravidal, Diaz and Akanji. Or that'll be um, a three and a two, and they'll build with, um, obviously, De Bruyne will pop down. But I do expect Farlan Mendy is a running machine, so they laugh about him, obviously, uh, Mangi's mates with Davide Ancelotti, so they say every time they play Mendy, they win. But they think he's a dread, like they don't think he's a good player. But like he, every time they pick him, they win. He's got that voodoo about him. Uh, uh, he's, he, he's, he's, yeah, he's just got like weird, weird technique. But if you're Bernardo Silva there, Mendy's good on the outside using his legs. Bernardo Silva getting in that half space pocket between kind of Cruz, Camavinga, and Mendy there could cause them real problems, especially if they've got Walker coming on the outside for width. Because Vinicius don't, don't really want to track back. Rodrigo almost looks like they're playing a the diamond, splits like a diamond here in Madrid, I'll tell you after two minutes. But City, can, if City can create numerical superiority on the outside, either via Grealish on one side, or via Bernardo Silva, Walker and Foden on the other side, I think um, Carvalho's a competent 1v1 defender. He won't mind Jack Grealish. Um, but I do think Mendy on the other side could be could be the weak link for Madrid. And I, and I don't... This keeper just doesn't fill me full of confidence. What about City's attack? Uh, sorry, Madrid's attack against City's back three. He's as good as anyone in the world for me, this Vinicius Junior at the minute. Like, I think he's... He, he's, you know... His only kryptonite is... Kyle Walker seems to have him covered for speed. You know, so Walker being back for, for these tonight after the second leg, uh, uh, the, sorry, the games last season where he kind of meet, meet them, you know, two fucking roadrunners, but Walker had his number. Vinicius Junior can't run yet. It takes away a massive part of his arsenal. It's just how fit Walker is. You know, he, he had a soft tissue injury in that England game. Looked like a hamstring. So the last thing you want to be doing it is your first game back going against a fucking racehorse like Vinicius Junior because your hamstring might get peeled off relatively early. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here. Walker's little bit of an ego, big games you see it with England. Good that they've got a male fucking Steve McManaman. I know he does loads of your tits in, but he's well better than any woman that be on there currently, like Lucy Ward or whatever fucking tone deaf bastard they put on. Um, it's good that they've got males on the proper game. How hard is it to just get males who've played the game? Helping the co-commentator Fletcher in this regard. This hey, is interesting. No, what a player though. Who? Like was. Incredible player. Well, what was that? He was shit at Man City. To be fair, when he came <laughs> to City, he was terrible. 
Um, mm. But obviously, he'd come off the back of winning a couple of European Cups and playing with Zidane, and then he's obviously playing with fucking mongs like me. Played centre mid, um, didn't it, with, uh, with, with Zidane, didn't he? Obviously, yeah, he's a he was flying brilliant winger at Liverpool. He's a brilliant fella as well, Macha, really, really good fella, great fella, actually. Um, really down to earth for, for the, you know, the level of player he was. Um, one of the first Bosmans out of this country who yeah, yeah. went from Liverpool on a free yeah. to Real um, and become an enormous success out there. The Reds still ate him for it? Yeah, yeah it's a str- they're a strange old bunch, aren't they? The, the Liverpool fans. Like They love Fowler, even though he went, he left for the eight, like Michael Owen and Mac Manaman. Yeah. Or not hate, but maybe don't, you know, maybe don't like them at the level they should. There's David Day behind his, his old man there. How does Mang come in? They're doing the pro license together, or oh, they just course. finished the pro license together at Wales. And obviously, um, I think they've become friendly. Good touch. How friendly? Well, it, it depends who you listen to. <laughs> if you listen to Mangs and Mangy Tax, he's the best mate. He's going to his best man at his wedding, but probably you speak to David, he's probably only let on to him twice. You, <laughs> somewhere in the middle of that will be a uh, reality. Um, but no, he must know really well because we've got a lot of Ancelotti and Real Madrid training sessions on our hard drives, like so. We obviously, he's given them some good stuff. Um, okay, that's interesting now they've gone. It looks like Rodrigo, uh, Vinicius is the striker, Rodrigo is on the left hand side, and Valverde, it's, it's almost like a 4 2 3 1 here from Madrid. A lot of legs. Vinicius Jr. as the se- as the centre forward, as opposed to everyone thought Bellingham was going to play there. It looks like Bellingham's more in the ten. Valverde on the right, obviously Rodrigo on the left. I think it's a positive start though from Real Madrid, and like in terms of the shape. I'm trying to I'm trying to work out what he's doing. Here. He looks like Pep, the tinker man, as you know. Um, it looks like a Kanji's got the like, going from centre half into centre mid to create that overload, and obviously they're leaving Walker as the right side of the back three to deal with the pace. The, obviously, Vinicius Junior's pace. But look, you're, you're playing against City. Most teams, probably the majority of teams, will immediately drop off the wingers and be doubling up on on a Grealish or a Foden. I like the fact that they're not. They're staying up there. They're going three v three against City's back three. If you're Haaland, you're just peeling on Nacho well, all day. It's, ac- it's actually, if you if you look at it, it's actually not a free up there. All right, it, they're playing four two three one. Valverde is right hand side of the free. Vinicius is in the middle. Bellingham's in the ten, and Rodrigo is on the left. And then Cruz and Camavinga are sitting in, in terms of sitting. Cruz is sitting now, so it's like four one four one because Camavinga's pushed on with Bellingham to try and. I said to you, Real Madrid, they don't know any other way to play. Mm. Like Real Madrid beat everyone, so they're not going to just change for Man City. Obviously, mm. there'll be a slight adjustment tactically because they'll want to win the game and progress. But it's not like they're going to sit back and try and counter-attack because it doesn't suit their players to do so. I like that. It was the, um, it was the manager that got sacked from Madrid for winning the Champions League, but he didn't win the league. Was it Del Bosque? It? Yeah, I'm fucking mad, that. Did he get sacked for winning? He won the Champions League, but never won the league. Yeah. Or was think, it the, think, yeah, was it the other way around? No, it, it was. He won the Champions League, but he didn't win the Liga and got the bullet. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, when he had the, like, the original Galactico team, no. The, the problem you've got is, you know, how would you fit? Like, you, you're thinking they're going to factor in. You've got to factor in Endre signing for them. Um, Mbappe signing for them. Like, like where, where'd you fit? Where'd you fit? You know, Mbappe gets in any team. But like, where does he play for them? Does he like do you play him off off the left hand side or do you play him like I, I think Mbappe's got to play. Got, you've got to play him. goes, you know. I think Mbappe's got to is going to be a nine. I think he's going to go from, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo. Don't forget was a winger and then became a nine, didn't he? As he adjusted mm. his game. Mm. I, I think Mbappe and Ireland are on a trail for goals to see who's going to become the fucking greatest goal scorer, and. I think Mbappe, although he's not what you would archetypally uh, describe as a, a number nine, which Haaland is, I think he's 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 a modern nine. And if I'm if I'm him, you know you're going to score more goals from the centre forward position. Mm. 
and, and you, you want the team to be built round you and you're going to have Vinicius supplying you, Rodrigo supplying you and obviously Bellingham and, and Tuchemani or whatever underneath you. I, I think he's going to be the nine for Madrid. Plus, the nine the nine jerseys vacant. Benzema goes to Saudi last year and they, they filled it with who? Hosselu? Yeah. Was he at Newcastle? Is, he was at Newcastle, weren't he? Yeah, Hosselu, yeah. He don't know, to be fair to him, he don't, he's, he's, he don't know, you know, he's, he's not fucking the kind of marquee number nine. But I, I, I guarantee you Benzema, if, if he had his chance again, he wouldn't go to Saudi because it mm. looks like he's absolutely hating life out there, albeit mm. every time you fucking boy, you just go in, you kind of soft, <laughs> yeah. soften your disappointment. You're on about £15 million pound a week. Okay, that's interesting. That Haaland, Haaland's gone to that other side against Mo, against Nacho. Flat different moving after the last game. I, 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 I thought, like, they, they just got really physical with each other and... Haaland's a big unit, but he's only he, he's only young and Rudiger's carbon graphite bones, them them mad. I know he's German, but he's like an African German, isn't he? Honest, everything about them hurts, like the the, the elbow, everything, the skin sharp and everything. They just Wiley. they just rugged, they just rugged. And you remember Rudiger here? He was physical in the Premier League, and I, sometimes strikers, as game as they are. You don't want to play Did against you, it, yeah. Because if you're a striker, you've got to get hold of the ball all the time and the defender gets a chance to attack you all the time from behind and you've got no shin pads or muscles on you, you know, on the back part here. You, you, you're quite open to get uh, roughed up physically. The only thing you can do as a centre forward is, is kind of back in and use your frame and you can't elbow anymore because of VAR because you'll be straight off the park. Mm -hmm. Used to be able to elbow them right in the fucking nose or right in the chops or in the solar plexus or in the throat. Obviously, you do that now, you're walking. Yeah. Whereas Rudiger can knee you in the back, you know, we'll have Mark Viduja on the podcast yeah. Friday. Duke spoke to me about Roberto Ayala saying, I come off the pitch and just down the back of both calves was just blood because all he did was just stamp and, and, and rake me down the back of my calves. Good catch on the keeper there. Yeah, I think it's right his bread basket though, isn't it? I think it's, I think it's right, you know, it's, it's exactly what you want as a warm up, isn't it? If, if your goalkeeper coach is putting a cross in, that's how he cross it for you. Do you, know, do you know since he's grow, grown his barnet and slicked his barnet back, I think he, I think he's going for a, I think he's going for for a one of it for the uh, Jack Grealish or the Barton, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. He hasn't been as good since he's come back with that Mike Quiff. I know he's cut his hair tonight, and I'm hoping he has the opposite effect of Rapunzel in terms of um, <laughs> when he cuts his hair. He, he or what was his name? Was it Samson who used to cut it? Samson, yeah. Samson. So with Grealish, right? <clears throat> Burns my head out when you when watch him play for City because I just think he's completely reserved. He just hogs that touchline. Doesn't That's really come alive. Play, I know he's told, yeah, and, and, and people say he's adapted this game and all that, but what a, what a player he was at number 10 for, for Aston Villa and like a match winner. The, the, the problem you've got is in a pep side, they play from a systematical uh, pattern. And yeah. if you don't do it, you've heard Thierry Henry talk about and take the ball past the ball. If you don't make certain runs and you don't stand in a certain position, he just takes you off. Yeah, which, which you agree because obviously that, that's what gets you success. But for England, he, he's, he, you know, he hasn't been played in that number 10 role. And I know we're, we're, we're star heavy in that, but he doesn't get a shout in that for you, for that number 10 role. I, I don't see, I don't see him more. as a 10 because I think his major attributes are getting you up the pitch and getting you free kicks. I think if you said to me what's he really good at, I'd say getting you up the pitch and getting you the free kick. I think he's, he, you know, last year I think he was the most foul player. So he advances the team and he allows a team like City to close. So when you're when City are attacking, the rest of the team are closing off the rest of the pitch so that you can't counter-attack them. It's very, very systematical what they do. It's, it's ridiculously repetitive. Like, and this is what's constantly missed. All the other teams are all playing as they fucking want and free. And the best teams don't. The best teams play from structure. The best teams play from position. And also, they've got the best players, which helps. And when you look at, like, a Man United or a shit team who are struggling, oh. it's because they just allow players to do what they want. It's why England struggle, because Eagles Southgate doesn't out. really fucking know what's mm. happening. You know, he's got half a clue, but he actually hasn't got a clue at an elite level, like, obviously, Guardiola, Ancelotti, all these elite-level coaches, you know... You know, Renus Michels, Pep's a, a product of Renus Michels and the Dutch total f football system. He inherited it from Johan Cruyff. All right, Ancelotti comes from the Italian kind of school of thought, which is, you know, very much methodical, very much um, kind of repetition of, of certain structures moving through the pitch that give you an increased uh, percentage of, of being successful. 
But you can see City, I called it earlier on, look, they're building with a 3 2, see ya. Like Kyle Walker is tucked in on this side. They're building with a 3 2 in terms of Bernardo Silva's gone higher, Foden's gone higher, and Akanji's gone into midfield. I thought they might have done it. Yeah. There's Akanji driving on. I thought they might have done it with getting Walker high and wide and overloading it that way. Mm. But obviously, Vinicius Jr.'s pace is. He's playing on Diaz, it, it, isn't he? Vinicius Jr.'s pace is. Is, is not good for Diaz, is not good for the Kanji. So Pep's gone, that's the matchup I want. So he's sacrificed, obviously, getting Walker on the outside to get a Kanji in the middle to give Walker uh, the foot race against uh, Vinicius Jr. as opposed to Diaz or the Kanji. Yeah. I don't, I, like, I, everyone, everyone goes mad over it, like Stone's going in there, and I'm like... Wow, oh, what a touch. Um, I'd much prefer a, mid a midfielder in there. He's offside. Kovacic Chance Oh my god Oh Goal. my god I think he's safe? offside initially I think he's initially offside I've who got him going, to score was, or assist who, who was going for nil-nil Yeah he said nil-nil Josh 1-1 one, one. I think this is offside In the first pass to Vinicius Great save from Edison as well You know No one following That first save But bodies in the box though Madrid. Him, I, I just think as he slips the pass into the box, I thought Vinicius was offside. But look what at the a, shape here, yeah, look, it's pretty much man for man all over the pitch. But again, what a touch from Bellingham. Oh, oh he's a joke. See, I think Vinicius is offside, yeah. He's definitely not. No. Oh, no. Who's Who plays him on? Kyle Walker. Walker. Okay. Fuck's sake. What I was you going to say about him? Yeah. Dropping a clanger, his big ego. Is that you were going to say before? Yeah, yeah. big games. Oh, it's both. It's him twice. Colin. One it's, one Kyle, it's Kyle Walker twice. He plays him on side, and then he. Why does he shoot in? If he just stands still, he clears that. He's just oh, had a kid, had hasn't he? Shindy. He's just had a kid, hasn't he? I don't know which what who he's had it. I think, <laughs> who? He, I think his. I don't know yeah, who fucking two. Um, I think he's had a, another kid to his original missus. To his actual missus. Not the one he fell into. Oh, how how many times by mistake? I think he's had his four. The one that he had two kids with by mistake twice. Yeah. Is just, he Muslim? Uh, yeah. Who? Walker. No, maybe, Most I don't know. Lives. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Um, no, I think he just fell over twice and ended up falling into, inside some bird and getting a pregnant <laughs> twice. How oh, unlucky well, is that like? You've got to be fucking really unlucky for that to happen. But I think he's just had his... His missus was pregnant at the time, launched the mouth, chance. Oh, but, and he um, go for the neutral, though, yeah. It's uh, hey, open the game up. I going to be loads goal. of goals. Loads of goals. I what I say? 3-1 City? Yeah. This is the problem of, is Walker fully fit? Because he's half a yard deeper. Usually he gives himself a yard because he backs his pace. He's half a yard deeper there against Rodrigo. He then oh, he then panics and runs in. If you watch that back, he should have just stood still. He had Rodrigo yeah. and he did intercepted the cross. But for some reason, he runs into the middle of the six-yard box. Well, look, mentally, I, I did touch on it at the, start of the, uh, at the start of the stream. His ego or his mentality struggles in big games. He makes mistakes. Walker? Yeah. Okay. Go on, back that up based on what, what have you said? Like, England, I, um, England performances in the big games. Has, um, has he been, I haven't seen him. Yeah, I haven't it, gone it, it just his all round play. Like he, if he comes up against a challenge like he is, is up against Vinny, his ego kind of gets the better of his mentality and he tries too much or well, you just, just never try, general you game never try and run him. So the, the only thing he, like the thing he is fucking ridiculous at is running. And a really quick player, stop and go on them. So... Is kryptonite for them. Get get them in a straight line. Let them run. He's gonna beat you because he's a thoroughbred. Um, Twice. And I always see people fall into the ego of trying to run past them, almost like I need to show everyone I'm quicker than him. And I've seen Vinicius do that a couple of times and lose. <laughs> um, but but I I wouldn't put that same label that he's a bit of a big game bottler at his door like you are. But you might have seen oh. stuff I haven't. I haven't seen an, uh, that type of. Performance, but then you know, as you said there, he, he has just fucked up twice there for for that goal, pretty much. He he played them on side and and then panicked and Ooh. tried to run four yards inside, and he didn't need to, and ended up missing and giving Rodrigo two bites of the cherry. A crucial goal. Men score goals, not space. So he he had Rodrigo. He, he clearly had him because he gave him a yard to, and played them on side. Then why not just mark? Why not just feel and grab all the Rodrigo and and know where he is at all times. Even if he gets the first shot off, which Edison saves, he you would have been there for the second shot. But game on now, it's set it up perfectly for us. City fans trying to make it, uh, 
bit of a bit of a noise there. <laughs> I feel for City because the fans are they're fucking great fans, the City fans, and they get nailed. Yeah, the old ones are, but these all fake new ones that come in when you start to get well, good, the they're shite, aren't they? Well, the club's fucking changed, hasn't it? Let's be honest. And you know yourself, there's, if Everton would have been successful with great the machinery money, great touch. Oh, mm. it's half a chance. Um, if Everton would have been successful with the fucking machinery money and we're doing what City's done, all the fucking dick Swedes from fucking USA and fucking Philippines and Thailand and all that would have been turning up a fucking Goodison or Bramley Moor and then just start slagging off all the hardcore Everton fans because a load of tourists have turned up. I think it's hard. I'd like to have that uh, choice, to be honest. Just does enough there, Nacho, doesn't he? Just nudges them. Good defending that for any kids watching. Don't fucking give them anything. Get your hands on them all the time if you're a defender. Make what were some of the, the dark arts, Joe, that you used to use as a centre mid? Uh, everything. Everything you Go can on, get away with. Give us some examples. Little, little pinch I on the back of the No, back of not the really arm. that. I just knee in. I just try and knee. I jump for headers and try and knee in the bottom of your spine or knee in your back. Um, I love the one where you just passed it away and then I just fucking clatter you. Especially first 20. Back in my day, you couldn't really get booked in the first 20 unless you fucking really got after someone. Um, Same in I like the ones from behind. Yeah, yeah, no, I trained as I played. I wanted okay. to win training every day, so. Seeing you want to win five a side games, I think like FIFA, yeah. yeah, whatever it is, fucking heads and volleys, whatever it is. Um, at least if you beat me, then you know you've beat me and I've, 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 I've not given you it. Um, I used to like the one where you you could, like, you know, like stand, like your toenails are sore, and like I used to just love standing on people's toes, to, like set plays and all that, or just accidentally stand on your toes. I always Especially in the winter. Always remember watching the game City against Arsenal. I think it might have been the game where Arnie scored that absolute rocket. I'm right behind it, yeah. I tried <coughs> to slide in to get it. But the first, the, the very first, well, the first couple of seconds of the game, the kickoff, off Bergham's knocked it to Arnie, he's played it, you've gone in and literally stamped on his toe. I thought this was going to be, it has to be the, the fastest yellow card in Premier League history, but I think it was Rob Styles didn't book it. Like he let that one go, yeah, but you used to get away with a little bit. You, 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 the first five minutes, you're just fucking, you're coming out of the trap, so you're just like, you're like, right, I've kind of got an immunity. It's like, get out of jail free. The first five, go, go. Oh, what a hand. Tackle. Keeper's Rudiger. done very well. Was that the keeper or the keeper? No, the cat, big hand. Yes. Oh! Yes! Oh. <laughs> Good game, lads. Come on, with me. Good game. Bit of voltage Great header back from Ireland. Textbook header. Edit back the way it's coming from. Shit ball from De Bruyne well, again. Well, you know? if, he, if, he, if he fakes Bad that and shit slides ball it in. from De Bruyne, he fucking hits it rather than the keeper. That's a great header. Oh, and then, to be fair, Bernardo Silva is usually sharp as, as attack. You'd want him on that. Is he not expecting it? Or is it just too wide? Like, that's a chance oh, for him. He's not even thought. Yeah. He's not that's expecting a chance for him. Yeah, it is. That's a chance, that. Game on. Not better though than, the, than this, in it, watching the best against the best. Like That first leg was ridiculous. Does it feel like. Does it feel weird for a Liverpool fan just to have the Thursday? I know he's out now, but well, pretty much out. Does, just having the Thursday, does, it doesn't, doesn't give you the same feel to the season, does it? No, the Thursday? Not, not at all. Like Everton, we'd be buzzing with the Thursday night run. Like Villa, <laughs> Villa are like. West Ham have been going nuts off being in the Inter Toto Cup last year. After the last few years. Playing on a Thursday, yeah, doesn't even get you excited, really. But do you think we're out do you, on Thursday tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Did you see that stat on uh, in the Paris game last night with Unai Emery's win record? No. Against all like the past current and past PSG managers was like miles ahead, seventy four percent or something. He's done a great you know, job like, at Villa. Great yeah. Job. I mean, I know, yeah. they've, I know they've had loads of money to spend, but he's pretty much taken. Steven Gerrard's nucleus added a bit to it and, and turned him into the Champions League. You know, you've got to be, you've got to fancy him for the Champions League, certainly after winning that Arsenal at the weekend. Um, Won the Europa League. It's a, How many times did oh, Seville? Sevilla, yeah. I mean, you have to you have to taper that on the fact that Sevilla win it regardless of manager, don't they? They've won it like five times in seven years or something, Sevilla. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, but they're, they're in the conference, aren't they? Conference you like the conference, are they? Villa. The, the Tin Cup one, but they got a fancy him for that. Yeah. See, that, that's some big games, though, Ajax. They were all going on about Davey Moyes and the job he's done. I think he's done a phenomenal job, but, like, was it just, is it just me? And I know there's a load of West Ham fans out there. Don't mind West Ham, but 
was just not getting a bit carried away over. Like, I thought Roma did the year before with Mourinho. I'm like, you're AS Roma. Like, yeah. the Europa fucking Thursday night when you f- league, which is the secondary Europa Thursday night league. It's not even the real one. I'm like, it's a bit like the Inter Toto Cup. Like, don't be fucking getting. And then West Ham have won it, and they're all going, West Ham have only won four trophies, and Moises won one of them. I'm like, that trophy didn't exist fucking two years yeah, ago, three years ago. Fucking wrong green so I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to poo on the on the achievements, but I'm like, surely it has to be tapered a bit. Fair enough, you win the Europa League, the actual UEFA Cup or the European Cup, but like, they just invented another fucking trophy to get more teams active. Do you well, know look, what I understand it, but because all the all the major competitions are now dominated by the same teams, with a couple of like rare exceptions, but so I can understand like. I reckon if, ev- if Everton won that cup, there'd be parties like. Would you? Would they? I don't. I don't know. You would. Like you'd be happy if you won the league cup or you win, you know, a cup. You're happy. But like, if Liverpool win it, would there be celebrations? The Conference League. Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. I, I, like. There you yeah, go. But that's the. No they're not in the Conference League, are they? No. no, no, no but, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think Just that there's it. a difference between the two. It's almost like the Conference League's become the UEFA Cup. It's almost like the West Ham fans are just. Yeah. Pretended that that's as valuable as trophy. trophy. Yeah. It's like you've been playing like fucking teams from Azerbaijan, and like no one cares about it. Like with the greatest respect, like if anyone tried to pull that card on you, you go, "What are you on about, lad? That didn't that trophy didn't even exist when I played. Like it, didn't, it wasn't even there. You finished ninth, and you're in the Europe in the European fucking league competition, Conference League. How I get it's great it for the fans, and but um, yeah, going back to Liverpool. Atalanta did just flap it this weekend. They were winning 2 0. Ended up drawing 2 2 against second bottom in the league, who hadn't won a game Listen, for God knows how Liverpool long. Liverpool aren't out of that competition. At home. Liverpool are the second jammiest team on the planet after Real Madrid. I'll never rule Liverpool out. Bear in mind, I've ruled, I've laughed at Liverpool when they were 3 0 down at our time to the best Milan side ever, and they fucking got, got the job done. Worst night of my life. I thought they were done in the Barcelona game and they got the job done. So the fact that he's on at Anfield makes me think it's going to be difficult for you. But, I think it could be different. Think less pressure. Oh, he's got oh, speed. The, the bouncers killed him. Oh, he's done well. Um, I, I, Liverpool get an early goal. He goes full strength. You can't. We get a goal in that first 15 minutes. They will shit their undies. The crowd and the players, and we'll just absolutely smell the fear. Could have see Liverpool winning that game three 0 Can absolutely. Of course you can. But also. I don't know, you've just come off the back of your season's pretty much just taken a fucking absolute yeah. nuclear warhead to it in the last you know, Go second on. half at Old Trafford. And obviously the, the, the two the two games subsequently in the in the Europa League and um, obviously against Crystal Palace. Oh, oh it's a great ball that you know. Oh Carvajal. Oh. I tell you what, this Valverde, he's the man. He's a Scored 14 and a half. Time, he's yeah. a 14, 14 and a half kilometre yeah. man. Every yeah. game. He's a fucking running machine. Yeah, he's an animal. His volley in the return leg. Oh, yeah, that? hell of a goal, yeah. Did, did, smart from Ancelotti, he's, he's decided not to put Vinicius in the matchup against Walker because he's lost it and put him mm. against Diaz and Akanji. Yeah. And Akanji's trying to slide into centre mid, so it's leaving Vinicius one on one against Diaz, which is not a good physical matchup for him in a, in a, in a, running, uh, in a running contest. The problem you've got is, can the City fans generate enough of an atmosphere to intimidate Madrid here? Because no. if this was in it the Bernabeu, easy. looks easy at the moment. The today. Madrid fans would create an atmosphere for the referee and, and City that would be intimidating. Can City do the same for the ref and, and, and for Madrid? No, it's going to be a challenge. But it, they're going to need Good to get point. a goal and get the tail up. This this stage of a competition, it's a massive factor, isn't it? Any people in the chat who's watching the Arsenal game? Let us know how they're getting on, oh, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, how they going, yeah. Let us know how the game is. All right, see, see, you can see it again. Look at City's structure behind it. Look how... It, it, there's the back four. You've got Diaz there, passing to Gravidal. There's a Kanji, and there's Walker. Really narrow in, and only Rodri sitting. So, Foden's giving you the width one side, and... Grealish the other side, but I think Foden needs to be in the middle on the ball because he's fucking on fire. I'd put Bernardo Silva out there. I think Bernardo Silva plays the wide slot better than Foden, albeit they both play the central corridor really well. 
I think the same about Grealish. If, they, if, they, if they're struggling and they need to get back into the game, I bring Grealish more central. But they're He's trying, that good they're on trying the ball. to do what I said to you before, so they're trying to com compact Madrid centrally. So by putting them four players there and Rodri just in front, Madrid are forced to bring Valverde and Rodrigo in narrow to deal, to deal with it. And then City are trying to create quick ball on the outside for 1v1 moments against Carvajal and against Mendy. Mm. But look at your matchups. I think Carvajal's a good 1v1 defender and he's aggressive as fuck. Don't, don't forget the time when they played in the Bernabeu and he was fucking put, they were pulling Grealish's hair and all that. Remember they roughed yeah, Grealish up, yeah. calling him a fanny? So Carvajal loves the physicality and you've got Valverde that side who's a workhorse. The mm. matchup for me is Mendy on the left hand side. Oh, and I'm not sure Foden out there is the best option. I'd put Bernardo Silva out there because he's a chopper as opposed to Foden and get Foden in the middle where he can run and glide off the back of Cruz. And Mendy's got the voodoo. So we're, we're in the know Bernardo that when he Silva's plays, they don't lose. Bernardo chopping and going. He's like really good balance. Like, mm. he's, you know, and he's really good at stop starting you, which a quick a racehorse doesn't like. Racehorses want someone who tries to run them. What they don't want is a chopper yeah. and a goer and a chopper and a goer. Yeah. Carvajal doesn't mind that because he's got really good footwork. If you'd ever remember, Luis Diaz was fucking flying, ruining everybody when he first came to Liverpool. And in that European final, when Madrid beat them, Carvajal nullified Diaz and Diaz never recovered for about three months after it because I think it's com he got that much of a schooling off Carvajal. Mm. I think his confidence was fucking ruined for a couple of months. Because he never made a mistake when he came to Liverpool. He literally came in and hit the ground running until he faced Carvalho in that European Cup final and he just got nullified. There he is. Good chance. He's an athlete, isn't he? Great head of back, isn't he? Great head of back across. It reminds me of something, but I just don't know what, you know, like some kind of like fish. Um, <laughs> All you can do is hit the ball. He's lucky. He's lucky. He's got the footy. To be fair to him, isn't he? Like, Bird actually plays. Uh, she's a professional footballer in Norway. Is she? What? Oh, oh no, she plays for somewhere. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, professional football in Norway. Women's. No, yeah, women's. Let footy me just in, uh, in, let me just double check that. And I'm sure she's a pro. Massive. But it's shit still. Well, it's it, 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 you know, <laughs> for women's footy, it's good, but it's obviously. Um, Lad, it's obviously I just, I just. Don't get it, honestly. Like on Yeah, she on, does. She plays professional football. Not a misogynist, for not, not I just like me entertainment. I love me football. I can, I watch it and all I do is feel sorry for them. I'm like this is just it's just rubbish entertainment. Like Yeah, I don't know what do you think about women's MMA and women's boxing? I know, big up Molly McCann, a friend of ours, you're fucking solid there. Eh? But I'm saying do you like watching the UFC, the women in the UFC? I don't watch it, to be honest. It's boxing, like Katie Taylor. It's definitely not as exciting as the men's. I don't watch it. What's a girl from Liverpool does well? Um, well Natasha. Jonas. Jonas. I don't watch it, so I, I can't comment on it. Women's golf, I watch that occasionally. So, but this one's saying, is it all women's or just specifically women's football? No, just football, lad, yeah. Just football. It, it is crap. And look, I'd never, I'd never go out my way to watch it. I, I, I might have oh, watched... Oh, it's a great knock. I might have watched five or ten minutes of the, of the, the World Hit Cup that. or whatever was on last year. Just got it, but um, it. it's literally just watching because it's on the main telly. I'm like, I can't. It, it couldn't hold me attention span for more than three minutes. It, the problem you've got as well is their arrogance. So they actually think they're really good. Do you know what I mean that's the problem? It's like when you give someone the spotlight and you give them the exposure. All of a sudden they think, oh no, I'm fucking brilliant. They don't realise. Uh, it's like the trannies. Uh, no matter how much fucking don't makeup like and how nice don't. dress you put on, people are, like. Even if people are using your pronouns and being nice to your face, they're secretly going, have you seen fucking Derek from number nine there? He's fucking lost his marbles. He's fucking walking around the woman's dress, the stupid cunt. Totally agree. But to the face, they're going, all right, Denise, how are you? You're OK? Yeah, yeah, you're you now woman, are you? And then they're getting indoors and saying, have you seen this daft cunt? Mm -hmm. um, you know, women's footy's the same. Like, when I see them, they're obviously on the telly pontificating. And Dangerous for society, though, and their <laughs> general fucking public thinking, really, if it's going that way. Well, up's up and down's down. But unfortunately, in the world we live in at this moment in time, it's not, you can't, like, politicians can't tell you what a woman is. Like, women have penises now, all right? Um, as, cra as crazy as that sounds, like, you can have a penis and be a woman, which is news to me. But in the world, and if you, if you 
you know, you, you fast, fast forward that. You know, now we've got ex women players telling male players what they should have done and what they would have done in X, Y, Z situation. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. No. Because they'd, be, they'd just be dead bodies all over the pitch. Because you just target them. If, if someone had a woman, you just say, listen, you pull onto soft shite there. And we'll just fucking hang the ball up on you and just absolutely nail it every opportunity you get. It'll be 45, you go, 31 You go for the weakest. Game, in any shot team you're in. playing, you find the weakest link. So you find the emotional or the physical or the technical weakest link in the team. And then you go, listen, this silly cunt's head's gone here because his beard's a slag and you're getting on him heavy and his beard's been shagged by about eight people, you know. So you just start peppering him all of a sudden. His fucking faculties disintegrate <laughs> and then you just keep overloading them. This is what people forget when they watch the Premier League. These lads who were, whose beards are on Love Island and all that. Did like get, that's did why Delhi Ali, can, Delhi Ali can't come back because you've got people like me saying to him nasty things about what's happened to him in his life so that he starts crying on the pitch and we win the game 3 1. And then he's waiting for you in the tunnel and he says, Shut up, Delhi, you silly cunt, and I'll fucking pull all your fucking hair out your head and flush your head down the toilet, you little divvy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you use every single thing at your advantage, so... Does it go on in the Premier League, right? Na- yeah, of course it does, every game. Like, the nas- nastiest stuff, like people, you know, tell, you know, people cashing each other off. As I say, if your beard's done, if your beard's done a bit of gla- grass flattening before you get there, or she's been around the changes, then you didn't, like, you know, I don't want to name names, but Jamie O'Hara, <laughs> <laughs> he just couldn't, sp- he just wouldn't be allowed to speak, because he obviously... You know, I had kids with Danielle Lloyd, and I think she's she's got a fucking sticker book. I think she I think she goes through the panini going, yeah, got got <laughs> need, got got need. Um, and then obviously he married her and had kids to her, and obviously not with her now. Uh, but then he just can't speak ever again because you're like, lad, you fucking, you fucking messing you. <laughs> what what's the um, worst you've seen on the pitch? Like, don't admit, maybe don't have to be involved in it. But have you have you come across any bad like altercations, verbal yeah, altercations? Yeah, loads. Yeah, 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 loads. I've had loads with people where I've known like other players have shagged the beard and I've told them, said, "Shut sure, up, you silly cunt! Your fucking beard's been shagged by him, him, and him." And just watch the fucking lift, just go like that. And go, and you're going home to play it. You're going to the play it tonight and fucking half that dressing room's been hanging out the back of it. You silly cunt! <laughs> and you just they soon forget who the marker from corners. Because <laughs> the fucking they start going fucking hell all the like it's like Alan fucking hangover all them fucking all them text messages that she's fucking all the, everything comes in you just see the penny drop and then you just see the life unfold in front of them listen it's not if you want to be successful these don't forget these lads are playing for millions of pounds every week not only are the best footy players and the fittest and the strongest they've got the most fucking mental fortitude and you're going in the histories by winning the biggest. And, and your lives are lived in the public domain. So if you, you know, and, and, and football, this is what women forget. Lads talk as much as women, jangle as much as women. Actually, sometimes more. And everybody knows everybody's business. You know, everybody knows. Like Kyle Walker's dead, isn't he? Because he was crying on the... He was, so if Kyle Walker tried to say anything to me, he's won more trophies than me, he's a better player, whatever, but I'd just be laughing at him going, lad, you've just been crying because you got caught shagging a bit, you silly cunt on the telly, fucking give your head a wobble, you fucking divvy. Like, you can't come on giving it the big and acting all hard when you were crying during an interview because you got caught fucking shagging a bit, you stupid bastard. Um, and, and again, lad, I was ruthless. I'd, I'd just, if I seen your ma in the ground, your ah fella, I just get, I, I'm, nothing's off limits with me. Once, once we're at war, if you've got disabled sister, disabled kids, they're getting it, unfortunately. <laughs> and for the it. W. You're getting it. Like, I, I, you know, as, if I'm having a pint with you and we're sound and we're civil, then obviously I'm not going to be a right nasty cunt. But if we're in the theatre of war, every single thing that can be utilised against you will be utilised against you. By the way, it comes back at you tenfold, don't worry. It's not like a, you're just on there. It, 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 it's a two way street, it's a two way exchange. Then after about five or six skirmishes, you know, it, it changes a bit because people have each other's respect and you go, all right, can't call his Mara Slag anymore or his Bear Slag. <laughs> we better, you know, we've had a few wars on this um, and you kind of respect the fact that they've kicked fuck out of you and it, you know what I mean? It, yeah, like, yeah. But you get a few, certainly the youngins who come in who get a bit carried away and then you just hear them get emptied out. Um, what about, uh, what about the women's game? Do you think there's any sledging on there? 
<laughs> Any bitching? <laughs> I don't know. When they're, play, when they're, when they're playing against each other. I don't even want to, I don't want to think about it more than it's necessary. I only think about it because I don't want to see La them on my telly. Go La on, lad. It's a great... Go on, lad. Get a shot away. Get in. Oh, oh. no. Did you do enough, did you do... Well played, Arlen, there. Did you, well do an, um, did you do enough bitching outside the field to the war? So imagine if they're fighting for three, three points, what they're prepared to say about it. Oh, Kate's watching this. Yeah, I don't, we, don't forget, you know, oh, I, think women are, I think women are more evil than men. You know, you see, how many times you see a woman For sure. putting, like, brake fluid in her husband's dinner to say, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> very rarely see men doing that. Men are kind of more emotive and, like, act on instinct and do... But I, I think a woman scorned is your greatest enemy. Ma imagine the fucking the sledging on the, in the women's game, though. Hey, hey, nine, I seen those fucking shoes you had on last week. <laughs> Your ass looked big in that dress. Yeah. <laughs> Your ass looks massive in them shorts. I, I, it, it, the thing, did you see the Stoke player today who's done a cruciate and obviously Stoke haven't got the medical provisions in place for the women's team as the men's team? And I'm like, yeah, but because your insurance premium, that like, it'll cost more to insure a woman player than a male player because they have a higher propensity towards knee injuries based on the hip and knee alignment. That they're not really meant to play football. If they do, they increase the chances of a significant knee injury massively. So I'm like, yeah, if I was a football club and I think, I can't fucking sell you for that much money anyway. What's the record women's stands for? 200 grand? Mm. 350 grand? And I've got to pay 80 grand's worth of fucking medal for cover. Has it been booked? You. It is a book, and no, we get to, we get to the other side of them. Surely the amount of... Uh, the amount women's women's football's on the telly, though, that they must be getting weighed in. Yeah, but again, it's... Did do you actually do, or is, is it just like a bit they're of... They're overpaid. You know? They're overpaid for how much they're pulling in. But it was this, this, uh, I put a tweet up yesterday about the WNBA and the NBA. Like, women, the WNBA players are overpaid for how much they've drawn in. Yeah. The, the NBA the players are. Mm. Yeah, just like... Read, women's yeah. footy, like, watch it. There's fucking no one at the games. Yeah, they have a big drive every now and again to piss people like me off. To go, let's get 60,000 for the Emirates, but, like... It's, it's not, they're not football fans, they're all like having a picnic when the game's got, like it's fucking, it's, it's nonsense that they're trying to make it into something and I genuinely don't believe women care enough about it to make it successful. Like, you care about look how many men fellas are here, and women by the way, but look how many fellas are here and cause these fucking lives revolve around footy. Women aren't asked about footy, proper women, lesbians are, and tomboys. Proper, are they though, or are they just asked about trying, trying dead hard well, to be a man? They want to be men, don't they? So they're trying everything they can to be a man, and they won't let. I, I can do that. I can do this because like the, they've got a fucking screw yeah. loose. I can have a dick. Well, if they, yeah, they can now if they want. <laughs> Did you not see them? Have you not seen this? The best thing that ever happened was uh, this weekend was there was a female who transitioned to be a male. All right. So obviously you've had all the males crossing over into the female sport and dominating. Well, there was one went the other way, but went into boxing. Right, and got knocked out in 21 seconds, first fight. <laughs> Why would you do that? If you're physiologically not as strong. I can't believe the other fighter is, it, uh, him or whatever. Well, he was saying he's a fella, so he's fucking punched his head in and he just fucking knocked him out and gone, you know, still, still get the W, don't you? He said it was a fucking, he said he was a woman. He said he was a man. Ah, lass. Well, it, it just shouldn't happen. It shouldn't, it shouldn't happen both ways. But obviously, Punching the pads and all that and lifting a few weights and getting the testosterone in, yeah, she must have thought, you know what, I'm a fucking man. She's genuinely believed she's a man and after 21 seconds and getting her jaw dislocated, she's really fucking realised. She would have stayed, sure. stayed as a fucking woman. We've yeah. got quite a few people in the chat saying we should do a, a watch-along for the women's game. I can't. I, 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 reckon I'd, I reckon I'd get banned if I'm not already shadow banned off, you, off YouTube. I mean... <laughs> There must be the bill. Do you know what? We should. We, we, I will do one. We'll do like if they get a Premier League decider or something. We can't do the cup final, can we? Before they missed, was that a few weeks ago when um, no, Emma no, Day's no pushed? Idea. Um... But um, it'd be comedy that like. Yeah, it, it'd be worth watching. Um, the fans are asking for it. Yeah, it'd be worth. Well, 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 yeah, we'll definitely do one. We'll definitely do one. But we'll have to be a good quality game. Maybe the Women's Champions League final. Because I've seen the warm-up from the one a couple of years ago where fucking not one of them hit the target from fucking 12 yards on the post. Can we get a credible guest in? Maybe like an ex-woman's player to, I'd to love call to get one on. I'd love to get one on. But um, obviously the Cozy. problem you've got is they know the reality of the shit of footy so they can't ever have a debate with me about football and they'll presume I'm going to attack them, which I'm not. 
I, I just need them to concede ground in saying stop being a pundit and stop being a co-commentator on the men's game because you just fucking don't know what you're on about. See, and you just ruin the spectacle for us as football fans. If the if there wasn't this like distorted reality where they actually argue that it's the same game, then if they just they made the pitch honestly, smaller, honestly, they made the ball not to realise, look. Men's the, game, the brilliant. Only way it works. Women's game, like support. I'll be like Sam. I'll probably be encouraged to watch it a little bit more and support it and say, "All right, it's not as good as, as fast and as good as men's. It's actually, you know, it's shit." But I can, I can understand they're all equal. I can understand them actually having a decent women's game of footy. Yeah, but the fact that they're arguing that much that it's the same game that's what re makes me refuse. Yeah, and my to thing watch is, you're fucking like, Sky subscription and watch your BT subscription or TNT. You're paying for it. We're actually mm -hmm. paying for it, and I don't want to pay for it. I want to opt out. It's shit. I don't like it. It's not. It doesn't entertain me at all. I could, I could get up on a Sunday morning and go to the local fucking Sunday league team and watch a better standard of footy for free. And yet, part of my hundred and fifty pound or whatever or whatever it is for Sky for the fucking month is tapped into these fucking cosplaying women. And the problem I've got with them is their arrogance when you say to them, "Hey, use a shit," you know. And then all of a sudden they start saying you're a misogynist, a sexist, a racist, we're scared, we can't... I'm like, get to fuck. Um, but do you understand what I mean? Like, before, was it a Euros or a World Cup? I, I, I don't know what, what England hosted. And, like, the whole country got behind it, which I understood and understood. Yeah, it's, it's I, I took my little yeah. girl to Trafalgar Square to try and get her into yeah. it, like, because she was six at the time, to try and get her into it. That's great. Women's games coming on here. And, but then it was after that and after, what's her name? Fucking Megan. Rapping up. Yeah. Equal pay. All, all that nonsense followed it. Or, yeah. was, or was like at the same push. And it's just ludicrous that you, if you're a lover of, of football, men's football, that you, you, you think you can compare the two. And then this battle has now come on. Well, that's, that's what happened, wasn't it? This like became more. kind of like the, the poster girl and, the, and, and with a real, real arrogance yeah. to it. Wanting equal pay and all that kind of stuff. And then what happened is a few of our fucking useful idiots in the women's game tapped onto it and obviously Black Lives Matter and the big political push came and they seen an opportunity to seize power and grab at these kind of communist fucking neo-communism that's popped up where, you know, if you don't agree with them, they cancel you and they, 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 they exert pressure on you to try and make life really difficult for you, um, which is classical fucking left ideology. And, and then what happened was they overstated their importance and, and their arrogance um, uh, caught up with them. And I think they just pissed, obviously, like yourself, they just pissed loads of people off. Mm. And when you see Emma Hayes do the press conference she's done after pushing the lad, pisses you off further. When you see uh, Ina Nuka 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 No, a Nuka 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 No, um, in the Daily Mail again today, spouting absolute horse shit about you feel scared in stadiums and all that. Which is which I'm telling you is only about trying to um, get coverage in the media um, to try and revive a claim against me to sue me, the stupid bitch. That's what she's trying to do, the fucking little witch. Um, which you is remember she's done the thing with Mariana Spring, with the, the BBC's yeah. head of disinformation, who was conveniently caught out by the spectator uh, fiddling a CV, um, and then was given an award. Like, it's just bizarre. So the sooner we, the sooner we, um, we wake up out of this fucking absolute crazy spot we're in, and and history will judge us correctly. I seen Graham Linehan there, the fellow who wrote Father Ted, who's been vilified for four, five, six years, and then the cast reports come out, you know, that children are being mutilated by be given surgery and puberty blockers before a certain age, and it's kind of indicated the position that, that Graham took to the point where it's almost turned full circle on him. And I'm pretty sure in a period of time, we will look back at this period as males and go, what the fucking hell were we thinking having them stupid bitches on talking about footy? That's what we're going to look back. People are going to go, can you believe one of them fucking women were on every fucking programme talking shit, pretending when, they knew what they did? When there's peak football as well. Well, it's peak, peak clown world, isn't it? And, 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 and I, I genuinely believe this, this epoch we're in now, people will look back at this and go, they actually lost their fucking minds. They were walking, they were letting fellas, say they were women going into women's jails. They were fucking letting fellas use women's toilets. They were letting fellas play in women's sports. Yeah. 
They were a fucking civilization that lost the fucking marbles. Now, that might be 50 years' time. There might be a great civil war that fucking resets it. Fingers crossed. Because I'm telling you, if we get a civil war and you fucking look around you, yeah, I'm happy with who I'll have in the trenches with me. If I'm on the right and I'm these misogynists, then I'll be happy. When you turn around on, you're on the left and you've got <laughs> ex-women footballers and fucking fellas who are dressed as women and a load of simp and f simps who can't get their half, who, who, who fucking absolutely waste, waste the time. Beaters and, and uh, low-level fucking males. You're going to fucking realise you've picked the wrong side in this confrontation. Um, and, and it'll come because if the left keep going left and the right keep going right it inevitably ends up in a clash I, was, I, was, I said to you I was talking to Mark Viduka today Mark lived through the Soviet, uh, the, the, the Soviet Union breaking up which obviously made Yugoslavia break up in the 90s so his family emigrated to Australia and he's seen what happens when the left goes left because mm. that's what happens in, in, in that's what happened in the Soviet and, and the left communism it's never worked People argue it works in Cuba. It's not fucking working in Cuba. And the, and the extreme example of it is North Korea. It doesn't fucking look like it's working, working for the North Koreans. Come on. Oh, not like him. Um, and, 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 and then he obviously moved to Australia and became a conservative. His family, because they'd seen what the left had done. Then he's lived through, obviously the COVID pandemic and he's watched New Zealand, Canada and Australia be become, you know, pretty much, you know, locked down states. Yeah. Absolutely locked down states. You know, certainly New Zealand is Canada and New Zealand are as well, Canada's as far gone, I think, as a country as I've seen. I don't think I've seen a, a, a country as as mentally ill as Canada. Didn't women's football fucking originate in Canada? Or America, one of the two. Canada. Well, so the trucking thing, the big thing was the truckers, wasn't it? When um, obviously they seized all the bank accounts, the truckers protested, and, and the Canadian government seized the bank accounts and the GoFundMe's and all the crowds, like which was <laughs> as scary as a scary a situation as, as you want to see. Yeah. Uh, first half, City have huffed and puffed. Real have got what they needed, the goal. Um, and I think, I think City have been the better side, but but obviously. I haven't had a little bit of run in front of goal. I think if that hits the bar and Bernardo Silva puts it in, um, as time ticks on, it's going to be really tricky for, for uh, City because the pressure will start to grow. I went for 3-1 City. I, there's nothing I've seen that'll um, that'll change me from that. I do think if City get another goal, they'll go on, they'll go on and win it. Astute by Real Madrid and Ancelotti. Good tactics. He's a top coach, isn't he? But... but no one's seen that coming in terms of, you know, everyone thought it'd be Vinicius against Kyle Walker. You know, Bellingham, they, they had on the teams on, on TNT here that Bellingham was going to go through the guts. But but I do think it's a correct matchup based on Kyle Walker's got Vinicius Jr. for pace, albeit is he 100% fit, Kyle? You know, he's had that soft tissue injury. It takes a little bit longer, I would imagine, to be 100%. The last thing you want to be doing is getting in a straight foot race with an absolute gazelle as well because, you know, mm. your hamstring tends to... Mm. Um, come under severe duress in, in, in those foot races. But I still don't... I don't like the Foden on the outside. Foden's been City's best player in recent... And then you've moved them out of the centre. When you yeah. play on the outside, you're reliant upon someone else to get you the ball. When you're in the central corridors, you can dictate play. So the one thing I'd like to see is Foden brought back into the centre. And obviously, Pep's the best coach... In, or one of the best coaches in the world. I, do, I don't think he'll... He'll not adjust this. I think there'll be an adjustment here. Uh, I'm not really liking a Kanji sliding into midfield. You know, he's a centre half. John Stones has done well and got away with it. Doesn't necessarily mean the next centre half in line will do it. And I think, you know, I'm 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 looking through the city side, going, okay, how the, how what can they change? Is Alvarez? I can't, I've got my phone on. Yeah, me. Alvarez on the bench. Would yeah. you bring Alvarez on? Maybe, you know, but then who are you going to lose for it? You know, mm. would you drop Rod? You know, can he, he can't afford to drop Rodri back one Doch and maybe him. give a Kanji up because Rodri doesn't have the pace to deal with Vinicius Junior in that central corridor. Surely you put Doku now. Doku gives you something. But again, I, I, again, I, think, I think Greenland's played well. Greenland, he hasn't though. He hasn't played well. Played. Again, got him again, it makes my point. Which that that he does, and he and he's done it well for Pep. But he's got so much more to give than just hugging that touchline. Like if you want to get back in the game, you can't it's take Doch Grealish him. off. Richard. Well, he's on a yellow card now, so but he, he'll do something here. Does he put Doku on on the other side? He's played Doku in the other side in 
in, in recent games. Yeah. Um, Doch, would I think he's got to do something. He's got to do something here because he's got to try and get Phil Foden into the game because as yeah, I think he's on the periphery of the of the game and you know he's city. He, he's your player in form. De Bruyne is a great player, but he hasn't played well for. You know he hasn't played well since he's come back from injury. He, he hasn't he hasn't quite captured his, um, his quality that he that he normally has. And, and the player who's stepped up in his absence has been Phil Foden. But mm. out on that right hand side there, you know he's he's out the game. And especially with Kyle Walker tucked in, and uh, and being mindful of Rodrigo and, and Vinicius, he he's getting star of the service. Yeah, and he scored in the Arsenal game. No nil. Nil nil. Mm. Right, I'm going to go for the Jeff here. Someone in the chat before said uh, Bayern were controlling the game. Have we got any captains for uh, any questions for uh, Josh over here? For who? For Josh. For I've got one. Yeah. Who's for getting the ailing? What? Who's getting the ailing? Who's getting the ailing? Uh, Ollie? A Peroni, please, lad. I'll have one as well, Josh. Uh, Joe, please, a Peroni. Julian. Julian Speroni, yeah. How's, uh, how's the pale ale? Looks very fruity. Very fruity, yeah. Someone said before in the chat it looked like a trans pale ale. Looked like a what? A trans pale ale. Uh, it hasn't got any of the rainbow colours on. Yeah. It hasn't got any of the rainbow colours on, thanks, Paul. Did you not see? Uh, did you see the picture of other Chelsea women before? All the side and what's all? Come Chelsea on, women man. are playing at Wimbledon. Chelsea women, Chelsea women, all blue, all blue, and then two poles coming down. What's on the poles? Fucking rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal playing well, but need a few more shots on goal. Too much fiddling around the penalty area. Sounds like Arsenal. 50-50. How are the bets looking? <sighs> Not very good, to be honest. No fouls, tackles, yellow any, cards. Any good bets in the chat? How are we getting on? I'll let you know how I'm getting on now. To be fair, I've got 2-1 City and 1-1 one, one in that game, but... No. You can Actually, always tell when you're not doing well when you look at your cash out and it's in fucking pence so at half time. I've done a little double, a tenner. Have it to be booked, Carvajal to be booked. Obviously, Carvajal's just been booked there. Lima to have a foul, which is had one, and Tommy Asu to have a foul. Bernardo to have a foul, he's had one. And I need, I need Camavinga to have a foul. Tommy Asu to have a foul and have it to get booked. My head would be scrambled having all these things. It's oh, mad yeah. how much you can you can bet on now, you know, lad, for the, yeah, for the matches. Yeah, obviously. Um, like interceptions and all that. Oh, yeah, the Women's Champions League's on Saturday, semi final. Yeah, I'll watch the final. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll never ever complain about it, and I hope Joe wouldn't either. Laura Woods. What a lovely yeah, woman. Yeah, what's your thoughts on Woodsy, lad? Met her at Glasgow. She's a good, uh, lovely she's a good presenter, Laura. I work with her at Talk Sport. She's a good presenter. You know, she's 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 easy on the eye. I have no problem with, with women presenters who, who are good. It's the co-coms. See what I said to you about Walker here? Watch what Walker does. To be fair, she doesn't comment on any, no, no, she, any analysis or no, tactical. She's we, we, good at, at she getting can't. it out of people, though. She can't. Yeah. So... She's a foot. She's clearly a football fan who knows enough to ask good questions and does the job fine. Watch Walker's run inside. Why does he do that? See, yeah. they just kicked it. If he yeah. just stood still. Oh. Right back good save by Edison. Right, Adam. But. It is, but it goes right back to him. Could go anywhere. Um, Come on, City. Yeah, I have, I have no problem with Laura. I have no problem with a presenter being a female. Um, nah. She's very good. But, like, the problem you've got here is woman and two black lads. Like, so the white man is being, is being phased out. The white, the white person in the punditry, the ex-player, is being phased out or his opportunities are being limited. Yeah. Not because he's not good enough, but yeah. be specifically because he is white. And that is going to change. That's going to have to change. Because do you think it's going to change, though, or do you think it's you, gone you too far gone? Well, you're discriminating against the person because of the skin pigmentation, so I, I just think it's wrong. And anything that's wrong usually doesn't last. The best person for the job should get it. Why is a fella off Star Wars? What's it off Star Trek? Why is a fella off Star Trek fucking doing the comments? Which one? <laughs> What's Scooby Doo? Scooby Doo's. Um... 
He's in the he's in the podcasting world, and he Rio. Yeah, he's in every fucking world, and he Rio. He's into everything. I'm, I want to try and get him on our podcast because he was wanting me to go on theirs with soft shite, not the MMA oh, lad who fucking, who, who fucking threw bar sixteen digs and landed none and got a black eye. Got filled in his mouth. Yeah, got, got fucking lamp. No, he's not. Um, the big pie oh, ass who cunt. does it with him, Stephen something is it? Um, and I'm gonna text Rio. I'm gonna actually text Rio and say to him, you might as well come on ours because ours is smaller than yours. Um. But he's all right. We always say share the year with him at QPR. Obviously, um, good lad. But but again, you know, I'm more than capable and more than happy to have a full blown no old bar conversation with him. The problem for them is they won't have it with me because you know what I mean. It's like yeah. nobody wants to smoke because they know under duress when the cameras are rolling. I'm as good as fucking anybody. I'm as I'm as capable and as good of having a proper conversation. You know, there's not many footballers done question time news night. Uh, been in the hours of Parliament, houses of Lords, etc. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's just spitting, fucking nearly tripping up over the tongue when they're fucking talking about stuff they know. So imagine if we get them politically out the comfort zone. I'm hoping there's people brave enough out there. But again, you know, the big problem is at the minute, um, I, I, nobody's nobody wants to smoke like nobody's capable of it which is I'm, I'm buzzing because it just allows me to just say it's as I really always do I am the fucking cock if any I'm the cock of this fucking game if any fucker wants it you just fucking know where I am <laughs> but you've got support there though like Mark Faduka was it Faduka's are coming yeah. out yeah listen I'll start getting through the lads like, like the problem you've got is anyone who's Big and credible, yeah. A petrified that they'll lose the position. So yeah, I anyone said to you, related sure, to the media. like Phillips, like my roommate, like Mike Richards. I've had private conversations with all these lads. Petrified to, to get on and get recorded for fear of losing job opportunities for speaking to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because I am. Napoleon, the quota put out, he said four hostile newspapers are worse than a thousand bayonets. I reckon I've got 16 hostile newspapers <laughs> against me. So, <laughs> fuck them. Do you know what I mean? The fucking idiots. These are all. These are the same news organisations that have pushed COVID down your throat. The same news organisations that will tell you this politician's the right person for you. The same news organisations that constantly spread fear and propaganda for other people. So fuck them. The Fake his, news. You know the, the the who's the newspaper there? Murdoch's newspaper has just paid out you grand today, and that comes to a sum total of a billion pound of damages they've had to pay. For, to people for hacking the phone. Mm. I've got three sets, I got three sets of damages off three different newspapers for hacking my phone. Mm. So they fucking hate me. They hate me with a passion. The Daily Mirror, my granddad used to read it all the time, used to be a Labour working class paper. Sports editors, Darren Lewis, who's a racist, he hates white people. Darren Lewis. He's the one who'd done the CNN thing with Dwight York and said, oh, black people aren't getting an opportunity. Fucking drop me out playing that race card again. He doesn't like me, I think, based on the Anthony Walker thing. So he's hated me ever since, which is fine because I fucking hate him. So it's it's mutual, and I and I can't wait to run into him, and we'll have a proper conversation, and we'll see how big his fucking balls are when 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 we have a, a serious conversation. Then you've got to look at the son. Well, I'd obviously never speak to the son because the stance I took um, for me city based on what these the lies they spread about the people who died at Hillsborough. Um, who else have you got then? Then you're into the kind of. The Guardian, who I was once an ally of, but obviously, you know, I've pissed off a few of the left, the Wokies in, in The Guardian, and now we're, we're on um, different trajectories. Um, I've had to go with him again this morning, uh, Jonathan Liu, who's the sports editor, fucking toe dead. I think his, his only sports qualification is playing fucking Connect Four. <laughs> Why, how can you be head of sport for The Guardian? When you're some sporting achievement in your life is, you had 14 games of Connect Four. Equal seven. opportunities, mate. Again, but this is the thing, all these institutions and organisations are being filled with absolute fucking divvies. And again, after a period of time, once they start losing money, once they st and, and, and the world will write itself, uh, whether that's um, dem democratically or violently, the world will correct itself because there's no way we're going to go on with the fucking absurdity of behaviour from, from certain um, aspects of society. So the soon, I'm I'm just waiting for, for for normality to resume. And as I say, you know everything I've ever said. You go back my question time interviews, or what I said about the UKIP woman, whatever. Everything I've said will stand the test of time. Mm. I have been wrong on a few things, and if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll own them. 
but also pretty much all the stances I've taken over my career, I can stand with them. And everyone who's ever had a fucking slap off me has fucking deserved it. Nice. I've got a little, a little bit of activity. I think, again, people might enjoy the comedy of, uh, of the watch-alongs, but then it's getting a, a, maybe a little bit of anti-PC for a couple of people in the, in the comments there. It's saying, why, why would you go on question time? How, how can you say fuck them when you're going on question time? Because I didn't go on it, question it's obviously a fucking debate well, panel. I didn't go on question time. When did, when did I go on question time? Ten years ago or something like that? Um, the reason I went on question time was to show them I could do it. The, the, only, the only reason they gave me the opportunity is they thought I was going to fail and fail miserably and make a right cunt of myself. Um, because you were a footballer? Because I'm a working class lad, I'm a footballer, so sometimes they set you up to fail. Like Deli Ali last night? Well, I, I, I wouldn't go that, but yeah, but like sometimes they, set, like sometimes they, they lead you into stuff to, to belittle what you're about. So all of those things were done, news night, question time, etc., etc. All those things were done just to say, listen, you stupid cunts, not only can I play footy and not only am I a working class fella, but if I set my mind and my course to what you've done, if I wasn't... If I wasn't busy trying to become a professional footballer, I could fucking buy and sell you every day of the week, twice on Sunday. Because I have a mindset that can that can tune into doing whatever it wants to do. Um, or certainly at that time. And as I say, you know, it's difficult to talk politically. I had Ian Duncan Smith on there. I obviously had Louise Bors, the UKIP MP. UKIP had, had, had gained traction in the vote, so it was going to be politically a bit of a hot topic. You had the Chilcot inquiry about why we went to Iraq, people being killed and... So there was there was some um, interesting stuff on there, but as I say, if anyone watch, watches it back, every single thing I uttered on there, the only thing I got wrong was the analogy, because I used the analogy of using the least ugliest of four ugly girls. You walk into a bar, you keep with the least ugliest girl, and that's who everyone voted for as a protest vote. And the problem I had was the woman who was on the panel for UKIP was an ugly cunt, Louise Bors. <laughs> She's a fucking bush pig. And she, she thought I was saying she was ugly. I wasn't, she was ugly. I yeah. wasn't saying she was ugly, even though she was pig ugly. I was saying, hey, party, all the parties are ugly. You're just the least ugliest one. So we're taking you home and voting for you as a fucking warning sign to the rest of them. But that, but that's a nod to your working class background, that that's what men or Well, even they were just waiting for me to slip up. They were yeah. waiting for me to say something to jump on it. And uh, But again, mm. everything else I said on the Chilcot Inquiry and all the, other, all the other topics that came up, I was fucking absolutely on the money. And everything I've said... Uh, as stood and will stand the test of time, you know, that, that'll that be there, that interview forever. And don't forget, there's only three footballers who's ever done it. Clark Carlisle was the first who done it, and I know Clark quite well. I was second, and then, the you know, they put Jermaine Jenis up, who was with a QPR at the time, and Jermaine was put up because they were going to send him into the one show, and he's the BBC's man. And he fucking went on and pretty much said nothing. He just went on and... And just no put real his head purpose. down and got through it. He had yeah. not, he, he didn't, but they put him on because it was kind of like, are you an intellectual? Can you handle this debate? Yeah. I fucking cruise through it. And oh. and mine will be the one that he, that's remembered because of what I said and the way I said it. Because the next day, everything that went on, I had the headlines again because I'd said four ugly girls. Uh, any changes? Don't think we've got no. any changes, have we? Let's have a no, look. No, all the same. No, no, no changes. changes. Good. I th I think he's got to make a change to get Foden in the middle of the Carl. park. He's flipped Carval over by looking. Has he it. flipped him there, or yeah. is that just from the corner that just happened? I don't know. He's just been playing left back there. Yeah, I think that might just be from he? the corner, but surely he hasn't. You wouldn't put. I'm saying that. Well, he's on a yellow, so whether he's gone Grealish as a diver. You would though, wouldn't you? As a manager, what's your what's your Surely opinion, Joe? At our time, it's no, such a tense game. Carvel's had, Carvel's had them back over. Mendy's left back. Carvel's had them back over. It must just be in the corner. He's the best player we've had from these shows in a long in, in, in a long time, isn't he? Do you Bellingham. Like he's got it. He just looks like he's just, just he's just right, got that he? factor. Got the X factor. He's got it. How, how yeah, Mendy's look, Mendy's gone back here. How have our, our, our like big sides not taken him out of Birmingham? Like how have they not got on? Like well, it was a big discussion, weren't it? Like he was linked heavy with Liverpool. Well, Man, no, you as well. Fergie Adam. Went to didn't Fergie Adam. Fergie no, Adam for the chat. Think of uh, John Mertz or whatever Adam in, and you only give Fergie ten minutes with him. And Fergie was like, have I had an hour with him? He'd the sign, but if your auntie had bollocks, you'd be your uncle, eh? Well. Do you mean it's all like, oh, yeah, fucking hell. Well, would she these days? Would she? These days, she'd... 
She'd well, maybe not these days. No, actually, no, no. She'd be no, a fucking... Awesome. She'd, she'd, she'd be a they then. She'd still be an auntie. If she had bollocks, she'd be a they then. <laughs> Did you see the girl crying in the car the other day because they wouldn't use a pronoun? Yeah. She was having, like, a full meltdown. It's pathetic. Like, was that a girl, was it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was something that, it was, I think it was a girl trying to be a man or something. Like, it was fucking weird. Like, who goes in and, like, someone says, like, mate, or, like, sir, or, like, like do you get upset over it? <sighs> I get that sometimes, like, even, Z, even Z, with Z, a... You know, like, what, what, where does this nonsense go? Who I wouldn't even care if someone you know, called you know, me, you go like, to Tesco me. And, and you're getting your shopping and then someone on the till and you're like, I don't, know, I don't actually know if that's a man or a woman. Not because they're trying to be. Mm. Because it's like that grey area of, of are they actually a man or a woman? Just call them mates anyway. Well, if, like, if, if, just, if, he's ugly enough, if it's ugly enough to look like a fella, just call them mates. That's a safe like, mate. just mate, innit? <laughs> just mate them off. But you reckon she's thinking, fucking bastard, well, like, she mate. thinks I'm a fella here. Why, why, hasn't she, why hasn't he called me love? No. If you call them love, they get upset. There's a, the best one I've seen, and I haven't, I've just gone on this because Joe Rogan put me on it. The fit, these people who are fairies, have you seen these? Who won't go to the toilet and they want kitty litters and that? Mm. Like, no. It, I swear to God, lad, la- they, they won't have a toilet. They'll have a kitty litter in the school and they go the kitty litter. In the corner of the room. They're just going. Like a fucking cat. So there's one in the paper today who's put his, both of his hands in nitrous, o- nitrous oxide or whatever, li- liquid nitrogen to freeze them off. So that he hasn't got hands, he's got paws, oh right? My God. So then they've, so he, both his hands are gone, both of his hands are cabbage. So they chop their hands off, and the partner's there, like Hang stroking on. him. Jordan Pickford. <laughs> fucking hell, yeah, it was fucking at Stamford Bridge the other day. <laughs> so the hands have gone to look more like a paws, right? So lost both his hands, and his partner's there on the hospital bed recovery. And then as soon as he's got out, the partner's decided he didn't like him without hands and jibbed him. <laughs> the only reason he got it changed, yeah. chopped both his fucking arms off to be more of a cat, more yeah. of a fairy. It's fucking absurd. Uh, Sunder- oh, you don't hear that in Sunderland. It's just Sunderland absurd. Behavior. Like, why would you fucking put both your hands in nit- ox- nit- nitrous oxide or fucking liquid nitrogen? What is like, it, lad? Come on. Is it the internet? Is it, like, are people getting in, in spaces where they, well, they obviously are, but the worrying thing is now that's public spaces where they're coming in and believing well, it's, this it's, fantasy fucking garbage. The thing is, it, garbage. no one's, bo- if you're just gay now, no one's asked, like being gay years ago, was like, oh, fucking hell. It's gay, oh. Oh, no. Oh. oh to be gay, it used to be like a big thing. Now, being gay is just normal, because it's normalised, so they're like, right, I can't just be gay, I've got to be like a gay cat, or I've got to be a gay animal, or I've got to be fucking, I've got to be special. Everyone's special now. Not They, they genuinely are special needs, but they've dropped the needs bit, and everyone's special, and everyone's got to be a superstar. And I'm like, no, no, the world is full of, there's 8.4 billion people on the planet, 8 billion of them aren't special. There's loads of people who are in different gamut, like, uh, backgrounds but most people are just normal and nobody's okay with being normal anymore you know mm. look at the profiles you've got to have like a rainbow flag on there I'm anti-racist I'm anti-fat like why not just just live your life why do you have to put what you're anti it's weird how they're all single though because cause they're all fucking boring people who who don't want to work who are fucking bone idle because you have to work and you have to persevere and you have to push through and you have to struggle and they're not okay with that because they look on the internet and people are successful. Get in. Oh. Mm. They look on and they think they have a divine right to success. Mm. What they don't realise is life is just a struggle and there's rays of sunshine in it. And they can't have that. They need life to be a full sunny day every day. Mm. And in pursuit of that, they end up doing fucking absolutely mad things like turning into a cat, <laughs> shitting in the kitty litter for fucking four <laughs> years at school, and then being expected to be taken seriously when they come out of the fucking phase they're in. But oh no, you, you can't say that, because what about the poor kid? And what about the, the poor kid's parents? They can't be subjected to all that, um, all that judgment. Do you know what I mean? And then that's normalised, where people are actually made to feel bad that you can't comment and say this is fucking wrong here, this poor kid. Well, you can. You know, you, you just they make you feel they play the victim and they make you fi- feel sorry for them. But then after a certain threshold, like where I'm at now, you just couldn't give two fucks about the that race. race. That's what I mean. Walker, he's a fucking animal, isn't he? You can't you can't beat him in a foot race. Like it's just it's just fucking ridiculously quick. 
he uses his body so well as well because he got he, a reaction from the fans there. He, he pushes his arms into you, so not only is he quick, he uses his frame and his body really, really well to nullify your speed. Um, anyway, fuck these fucking weirdos and trannies and all that fucking I know. fairies. Wouldn't and all think that. we're watching the footy here. Yeah. Watching the footy. No. This is made Big for the game. podcast. This good talk though. People are loving it. There's um, some some defo, some fruits though in the chat. Is there? Some absolute no snowflakes. Fairies. There's no fairies oh, there in there. Yeah, there's I'll a few text, fairies here who like to piss in the, uh, the, k- the kitty litter. Or you're into that DI fucking bullshit. Don't bother tuning in. Fuck off and go watch you. fucking one of those into one of those fucking f- YouTube channels with all the fucking dick sweets on. Fucking Goldbridge or one of them with fucking homos. <laughs> Who was is it that you said you showed me one? Like they make them collapse from within themselves. They make them all go mad. That but fella talking on the YouTube. actually eating it. Like if you look at those communities now, they're eating themselves. Get in. Yeah, because like the left with what used to be a well, strong community. the gays community. and the lesbians hate strong the trannies. Like class. they're not having the trannies because the trannies have jumped on the right. Well, you look at you look what the left used to be in, in terms of how we grew up with Labour and our our granddads and and. Uh, Patriarchal family members who who formed and unions, patriarchal family members and maybe who yeah. formed unions and all that, and like fought properly for the left against the right. But now, what like all that's eradicated? There's no actual working class man allowed to be in the left. Well, it, it's like like I don't like seeing the kids getting fucking killed in Gaza and civilians getting bombed. But on the same side of that. I don't, I don't really think wearing these kifars and marching around pro Hamas shouts is like, did he not realise what these Islamic extremists would do to them? So gay queers for Palestine's the best I've ever seen. Because if you're a queer in Palestine, you're fucking taking flying lessons off the nearest high-rise building, and yeah, the, the, I'm like, it's bizarre. What do you think the Saudis think of of, of the city women's team, like the owners? Of Newcastle women's team, Saudis and Newcastle Qataris. Yeah. Qataris. It's just, it's just sports washing, so they'll do whatever they like. They'll, they'll do whatever. Surely they need they must to get do. a bit of shit when they go back home, now. No. They'll, they'll, they'll play the game they need to play to get power. That, that, the, the, the problem we've got here is once, once certain, oh, God forbid it ever happens. But if a certain, you know, you've just look at the communist, the Bolshevik revolution. Look what happened. It was meant to be for the greater good. Let's collect everybody's resources for the greater good. And what did they end up in? A fucking mass slaughter of their own people. Gulags, fucking concentration camps of their own people. Suppressing ideologies. And it took them from fucking 1916 to fucking 1990 Decades to break it. 1989. Nine, so fucking nearly, Great documentary nearly there on Netflix about that. The, the best one's on the iPlayer, um, but you'd have to stick with, with it a little bit. There's a really good one um, on the iPlayer about Russia, yeah. which is fascinating. Oh, uh, hypernormalization, yeah. Um, but speaking of Saudis and women, the Saudis will just chop your fucking so head. So that Amanda Stavely, is that a man flag. or a woman? The, the Saudi, I don't know. I don't. That could be a lizard. Yeah. Is <laughs> it an alien? I look every time I see surely, yeah, surely like, they can't be knocking about, is. and then obviously this is having a Saudi policy. This is part of it. So part of it is putting a woman in. So that you don't come at them for the women's rights. They're not stupid yeah. people. You know, but that is one finely chiselled woman there. Yeah, Aman- listen, Amanda she, you, know, you know, she she's a peculiar looking character. Um, you know, if she if she one day just pulled the mask off and was a fella, I'd go, <laughs> I fucking fucking hell. I thought told she was you. weird looking. I wouldn't say she's I told men in black though. The ripped her face off into like, fucking crack. She is a peculiar she's peculiar looking. And and don't think for one moment that them, the Saudis putting air in is is not a political manoeuvre. Mm. Absolutely is. The problem you've got is they're only going to let Newcastle get so big. They didn't want the Saudis in. That's why they didn't f- pass the fit and proper person test. But then, as anything, money talks. Enough people have got cash stuffed in their mouths. You'll get a World Cup there or you'll own a club, you know. Um... The people, the biggest mistake people make in that of my 41 years is thinking the world's fair. It's fucking fundamentally not fair. This is why people, when people are going on about equality, and, and I'm like, you're never going to get equality because equality only works if everyone starts from the same place and not everyone starts in the same place. So you can have equality. Oh, let's have a quality of opportunity. It's like, 
that's still not going to work because somebody who owns a business is going to give somebody no a start before somebody mm. don't fucking know. That's just the way the world works. Um, and we're going through the world and we're trying to make everything fair and everything equal, which isn't a bad thought process, but it's illogical to think we're ever going to get to it and we waste time. You know, civilizations, as you rightly point out there, fail first world civilizations on wasting time on gender and mm. nonsense because we've got a cost of living crisis. We've got food fucking banks growing at a ridiculous yeah, rate. And we're more asked about whether trans women are fucking but, really women but, or not. But we all know trans women doesn't exist. You have women or you have men. Trans <laughs> sexuals, transgender men is still a tr is not a woman. Mm. Transgender women is not a man. Like, and if that hurts your feelings. But then the, the big problem, and, they've, and again, they all, always overreach, the big problem is when they've come for the kids, when they've tried to educate the schools and when they've tried to get kids at 12, 13, 14, as young as eight and nine on puberty, on uh, blockers. Like, did they not realise you're playing fucking God? You're going against hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years of evolution. But it, because but it, you don't, because you're going all woke. But in this time now, there's people fucking lapping it up and making an absolute fortune and... Uh, gaining even more control. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, but the problem that, that, that this is what they don't realise. Like, think if you're in, like, I'm in Gaza. I'm a. I'm so you're a getting even less of an equal opportunity because it's getting that far. I'm a Palestinian, and you bomb me house um, or my school, and you kill my brother and sister and my nan and granddad and my mum and dad. Does not. I'm radicalised. We're going to war. I'm radicalised. I'm. I'm prepared to do whatever's necessary to make you pay for that. Mm. So the problems we've got in Iraq, and Af Iraq from the 90s, Iraq from 2000s, and Afghanistan, Syria, and now Ukraine, and now Israel, or, or Palestine is, we are creating problems in the next 10, 15, 20 years that won't be able to be solved around the negotiating table mm. because kids have been killed, women have been killed, innocent people have been killed, and yet all the people who are profiteering from that will be living behind gated walls with security and it'll be yeah. the working class, the people on the ground who'll have to deal with the consequences of it. But people don't realise that at the current moment. Um, look, That's, as a, yellow. Yellow. That's a harsh For, for me, it, I, I, this either gets solved at the ballot box or or in a boxing ring. <laughs> like, the, the, there's, like, you know, you're going to vote this year and Labour should win. But don't forget... Labour wanted to lock you down heavier than the Tories. It would have been an... I think Labour are dreadful at this moment in time. I think, you know, when I look at the front bench of Labour, you've obviously got Angela Rayner caught up in this um, scandal. Um, you've got Yvette Cooper there. She's pot inclined because I think she's got a transgender kid. Ed Balls, a husband who was once in the Labour Party, strictly come dancing, now on Good Morning Britain. You know, politics and celebrity, and, and it's all fucking intertwined. Mm. Um, the game is uh, getting a bit lax yeah, here, don't lads. The game's so, gone a bit quiet. You know, yeah, couple so, of Peronis right, deep here. I'm happy to, <laughs> to get a, get a bit, little bit off your so chest. You don't, you don't get this on fucking Monday nah, night People football. are enjoying oh. it, don't worry. Don't get this That's what I'll be saying in the pub, lad, anyway, when the game goes quiet. It's nice to hear people saying it how it is. That's what people. That's what people are saying in the chat. Don't hear just well, people you just. Can, you, fucking... could, you know, we're not in the Sky Sports Studio, are we? We're, we're watching it here in, in in Joe's studio, and there's no there's no PC about it. What do you reckon? What, what would you do when you go to the pub? Angelotti there. What would you do when you go to the pub? You have a pint, you watch the match, and, and you get stuff off your chest. <laughs> Oof! I think Bayern might have scored here. Buying one nil. Kane. Oh God. If it's Kane, I'm flying. I tell you what, the Spurs fans will be buzzing Kimmich. with Daddy Kane. Kimmich goes. Joshua Kimmich. Come on. I said, exactly I, what we did. Said to there's, you. there's a few in the chat there. There's a few in the chat. Who've, who've done the, uh, who've well, done the way, double? Done the double? Has anyone done the double in the chat double. there? No, well. I, 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 that would have been the bet. That would have been the value bet. 
But I, I still fancy City to win this, so I don't know why. I've just fucking fancy City to well, win. Well, I've got 1-1 one, one in that game it's and 2-1 City. All right, so he's done that change. Bernardo's gone wide here and Foden's come into the central corridor. <laughs> but I just saw him in the grid there. Yeah. And who's that? If, that? if that had been our Josh, he'd have fucking burst the ball. <laughs> what was the goal like? Ball Someone told us through Might it. Might have out. Please. <laughs> Did he show the, the highlights on oh, his goal? Oh, there's nothing worse than getting the ball in the nose, though, is there? Hey, no. Look at that Your nose, people. Water, that's had some balls to it, that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Bruce. <laughs> that is an old classic centre-forward. Um, uh, oh, under two and a half, looking good here, Josh. Oh, especially after the goal on 11 minutes. Yeah, I here's the, the goal. Here's the goal. Here's the goal. Kyle Walker mistake as well. Here's the goal. Static, Tommy oh, yeah. left back. Who's that on the heels? Edge of the six yard box, no one there. Have you been out there to watch a game? No. I know you've played out there. I played that much in Gladbach. Yeah. Have you scored from a corner, didn't you? No, in the home game. I, I, Ter Stegen, Barca keeper. I beat I scored for in in at the um, Velodrome. Scored at Marseille. But it, I, it, 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 it's completely different feel in them stadiums. Playing. Just, but as a positive ju or? just the fact like the, the whole experience of Germany it's a, it, they just do it differently I mean obviously the fan owned 51% it's good fun going out there you know for the well, game this is a, it's going to be interesting because the, the, the government are trying to squeeze a regulator into footy I'd love to be the fucking commissioner the regulator yeah I'd, I'd obviously never give it to me yeah. but I'd actually love I'd just cause fucking absolute carnage what are they trying to regulate they want to take some semblance of control over the game which they're angling for Usually yeah. when governments and stuff angle like that, like Richard Masters in the Premier League will push back really hard, but um, it's going to be an interesting. That's going to that's going that's not going to be the end of it for the next uh, couple of years. It's going to rage on there. Have you seen a documentary that stars EFC? No. About uh, when obviously when Berlin was segregated and you had the East and the West, they used to meet at. This is how like the formulation of like German German support for for like fans before football and all that started because. They weren't allowed to go to any public spaces in East Germany to, to talk or to be like arrested. share opinions yeah. or whatever because they'd be nicked. But they go to the they go to the match, they go to the local amateur games and all gather on the terraces and then that's when they talk. Fucking hell, it's dog shit here. We need to get out of here. See what they're doing in the West. Exactly the same in Yugoslavia. So the book I read, Yugoslavia politics and football. The seeds of the revolution were planted in the football stadiums, mm -hmm. like. It, the revolution started, the yeah, war yeah. started in the football stadium. This is our beautiful game now, you know what I mean? Look, again, the history, it stands back, that's only fucking 30, 40 years ago. And, and, and football and politics, it, it's, you know, it's, and so society, it's all mm. massively intertwined. That's why we've got to be careful of, you know, selling our football clubs Getting to invaded, these yeah. foreign governments yeah. and foreign owners who, you know, what, what, what English Premier League clubs now owned by English people? Do you know why the oh, argument is an Everton fan? English people? What, what team in the Premier League is owned by? Brentford's owned by Matthew Benham. Brighton's owned by Tony Bloom. Mm. West Ham is owned Two good by, models there, by um, the way. Sullivan and David Gold, although he's passed away. But I reckon it's five. Like, Forrest is... Yeah. Um, Luton's owned by um, a, a Gary Sweets, I think, the chairman. But I don't know who owns it, because one of my mates, Ian Mons, owns involved in, in Luton. Mm. I don't know what shareholder he's got. But there's like there's very like it's less than five or six teams that in the Premier League that are owned by, and now you look at the Championship now and League One and the and League yeah. Two, Rex, like all these foreign owners are hoovering well, up British you, clubs. You see, they're all like with Villa and then with Villa getting bought out at first, Liverpool. And yeah, the Egyptians in Villa, aren't they? They are now, yeah. But at the time, it was Americans when they bought them and they fucking sent them under. Yeah, yeah. Portsmouth, who was the French fella or something. Disney got now old Portsmouth. Loads, loads, loads bought them and he went down and, and I always remember Everton and, and <clears throat> there hasn't been many proud moments and I wouldn't even actually call this one, it was just an opinion that when we had Ken Wright and our uh, older institution who owned the club, we were safe because you knew the club would be balanced and it'd be like, it'd be locally balanced, the decisions would be made right, but there was a, the, the fans... You know ambition. what it's like when you go to the game, they want ambition, but look, we're losing ground, we need to sell the club, we Where's need to get an investor. Money, Bill? Where's the yeah, and he was shrewd, and we were, he was <laughs> shrewd. Was he say, he, we, we were shrewd, but we were great, and we were tough to beat, and, and we had a good model, but the minute that went to Mishiri, all right, you got the promise of the new ground, look how it's fucking turned out. Well, we're a mess because of it, and Everton, I'm told, are borrowing £25 million a month to fucking pay the pay the. That's just overhead. madness. Is that with this new stadium or something? It needs be, lad. It's sad. It's sad, really. And this seven-seven-seven look like a gang of fucking chances. 
I don't think they're... You know, when you think Maximo Chilino's past the fit and proper persons, the Saudi government's PIF funder involved in Newcastle after chopping mm. Jamal Khashoggi's head off, and yet 7-7-7... Seven, seven, seven. Well, they did. I don't think there's <laughs> fucking any debated. Do you know Do you know the story about Bin Salman and Jeff Bezos? Do you ever, do you ever hear this? So... So Bill, Bin Salman, I'm not, I'm not. Bin Salman's the Saudi. He's the ruler, Saudi right? crown. He's the crown so, prince, isn't he? So, if, if you remember Jeff Bezos' divorce, the Amazon guy Jeff Bezos' yeah. divorce. Yeah. Well, the most expensive in history. In history, well, Bin Salman caused that because he sent him, he sent him a text message to to Bezos. Bezos opened it and he put a Trojan spyware in his phone so that he could read all his messages. And obviously found all his photographs and everything back and forth with this Lauren Sanchez he's with now. And started... Because Bezos owns the Washington Post. So after the Kas- Jamal Khashoggi incident, Bezos was being blackmailed by Bin Salman to say, you don't fucking run that story in your paper. If you do, this is coming out. So Bezos had to fucking cop to his missus and get divorced. Fucking hell. So it was Bin Salman. He opened it. it this is all on public is that, is record. This, is this common knowledge po- now? Because you don't want the Saudi yeah, secret knowledge. police yeah, yeah, coming listen, through, yeah. Listen, dude, fucking hell, there's loads of people after killing me based on this. <laughs> Just the women footballers alone. Um, I, I have no intention of killing myself, so if, if, Jeff, if I get Jeffrey Epstein, it'll probably be in the Lucha 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 and my Lucha 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 Lucha. It'll be out the Nigerian uh, the Nigerian, yeah, the, Nigerian the Saudi um, secret witch police. doctors. Nigerian witch doctors put a voodoo spell on me. Oh, that's um, mad, that though. Fucking hell, you look at that stably, if, like if they're that savage, what, I wonder what the fuck she's done to shag away up to the top of that. Who? Amanda Stably, to be in business with them. She must have done some fucking grass there. I think she's been involved there. in financing for a long period of time, hasn't she? And, and then, is that her husband, that mehead, who's the chairman? So I don't know. She just doesn't, like, I don't know. She, I just look, she just looks weird. She was she was rumoured with buying Liverpool for a while, and she was, she was because I remember... Um, Owen Brown and Frank McPartland and all that were all they all thought they were going oh, in with chance with keeper's done in, well tonight. Yeah, he has. Evans been Adam though. Um they all thought they were going in to either Newcastle or Liverpool if she got it, and obviously she got hold of them and then they'd yeah. never gone in there. She's the kind of woman like that fucking. But she's big in finance, she was Barclays and all that, I think, wasn't she? Wasn't she a big, big financier yeah, in Barclay there? Brothers. So She's Listen, the kind of woman. These have got fucking bottomless pits, haven't they? They'll just pull a fucking load of oil out the ground and away you go. Um, but the big, the, the Saudi, look at the Saudi flag. It's the biggest. It's two swords crossed. That's that's what happens if you don't if you don't do the fucking the required job out there. Your fucking head drop, your head drops off. Chance two nil, yeah. two nil. Oh, no. not enough pace. Big. It's a big chance. Is that not enough pace on that cross? Or Vinny's made the wrong move to hang back. He should attack the near post there. Eh? I'll have to see it again. I, I wouldn't. Um... See, as a striker. There's only one way that can go, and it's coming across. You, you're attacking the near post because if you're under it, you're getting there anyway. If it's got you a lot of pace, you just yeah. leave your foot. Yeah, because you're through. The only way that could be intercepted Rather is if you hang back and it, wait. Yeah. yeah. I, I I I don't know whether it's good goalkeeping or he's read it early or it's a bad ball. I have to see the replay back. Oh. Easy foul, silly. Here they go. Okay. Grealish. He's lively, isn't he? Doc is sharp, yeah. He's had a yellow Grealish. And he's shite. I thought he was doing all right. You think Honestly, he's crap? I just, I what does right. he do, though? He gets in that, Listen, he gets he... in that final third. There's a couple of little ball couple rolls. Of shots. As we said, though, ball roll, chops for, Pe- it back for Pepe and does. Passes it backwards. For Pepe does, but the dynamic gra- uh, Jack Grealish, who really rose up like a Aston Villa. Villa. If you want to win a game, but that's you what have I've, him on the pitch, I've seen a lot of people saying. He'd be a star man in like a, a villa, maybe like a Tottenham. He was. Like he'd excel more in a team like that than he is at City, Chelsea, where he's just like a pawn. Yeah, Chelsea, he's just yeah, a pawn. When, 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 yeah, when, like when that exactly like man, that. Like, that. That season he kept Villa up. He you was mean, ridiculous. La, la, like, I don't think Pep just go, go and pick the ball up and score his goal. Like he's got, he's got that. And so what? I'm gonna cut. Doc, who's gonna score or assist here? All right. But all right, I get that he's got to play his, his See, part Valverde, of as being a pep cop. But from Valverde's that fit, he fucking doubles up look, all the time. So it's going to be hard for Doku because Carvalho's a good one v one defender, and and Valverde's a fucking athletic machine, a freak. Yeah. He'll be fourteen k for fifty. Could even be fifteen k that fella. What is he? Uh, Uruguayan. Uruguayan. Yeah. Again, when you look at it, like you know, I know they've got. Your Bellingham's and your Vinicius, but like 
There's a lot of no there's like still, still no frills, like, fucking grafters yeah, in that team, isn't there? You know, I always remember, you know, Manuel Sanchez and like Madrid. Even when they had the Galacticos, there was always like players who. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to say he was a fucking. But if you ever meant, remember like Ivan El Guerra and yeah. like there was just always players around the squad, Ivan Campo or who, Guti was one of them. Yeah. Who, who padded the squad out yeah. in terms of, you know, the superstars got superstar money. But I always remember Steve McMahon had been telling me there was lads there who were on buttons and they were just buzzing to play for Real Madrid. They'd obviously make the money on bonuses if they won stuff and got there, but they were on re- ridiculously low salaries. And the club would say to them, you're not going to make your money here. But when your time's done at Real Madrid, yeah. you'll obviously serve as somebody else. And because you've been at Real Madrid, you'll get paid. Yeah. And and he said there was always six or seven in the dressing room like that. You just loved it. With the Galacticos. Good pass. That's good, though. It's it's like, it's quite refreshing to hear that, though, isn't it? That people who were there who just loved it because you get that energy in the changing room then. Like, you're, you're training and there's fucking six fellas here chomping to get in the team. Because they need the bonuses. Yeah. Or they need you to win because yeah. they need the bonuses. So they're supporting they're the like, team. Because they're getting maybe four grand a week, but ten grand a win bonus. So they're instantly wanting you to win, whether they're yeah. fucking playing or not, because they're on bonus. Yeah. So that's the way they gear it. Whereas giving people guaranteed pay, like, I couldn't give a fuck whether these win or lose, because I'm not playing. I'm fucking fuming, I'm not playing. Might take that into my business. <laughs> Incent- <laughs> Warren Buffett, incentivization, getting your incentivizations uh, right is the key to a successful business. If you pay someone too much or too little, you demotivate them. Mm. But you've, you've got to find that sweet spot of incentive. It's like anything, is it? If you do a job for someone and they, and they fucking... You, you fucking want to do yeah. an even better job yeah, for them. Yeah, of course. With someone scrimps and saves and aggle, you fucking, come on. You want to fucking... You want to get in and out of the job as quick as you yeah. can. Absolutely. City, City are... Um, Huffing and puffing without really fucking creating anything here. A bit of encouragement from but the look, fans there. Why do you want a kanji on the edge of the box? It like, only took 75 minutes. Like, wh- wh- why do you want a kanji on the, on the edge of the box? And th- this is the problem for City, I think. They just can't create a cauldron that gets created at other, other grounds. They've got to find a way, Chance. Get in. Get in. Come on, boys. You've got to find a way. Why the fuck are you celebrating for City? Because I fucking had nine years at Manchester City. Oh, yeah, to be fair, you're fair. Fucking hell. Why are you? You want the English team to win, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you the little bit of luck. Oil Put money the, team to win. Get on the outside of it. Little I'm bit of luck. Doc, who gets on the outside of it? It's not a great ball in. Scuffs the clearance. Right to the main man. Great finish. Why do you, di- like, why do you dislike it? Is, is that a serious question? No, why? I, I honestly want to know. Rats. Great pass, why? Rodri. If it wasn't for them, we would have had three prems. Say. Uh, dirty oil money because they were the better horrible. team yeah because they've got oh. billions of pounds to spend oh. Tony Rudiger's got to sort his feet out you, got, you can't clear that is that a Doku assist Doku made Two the goal mistakes. there nah Rudiger's got to clear that lads Good finish. It yeah. looks like uh, Rudiger's yeah. got to kick that out though, I've got 2-1 on City and 1-1 one, one Arsenal me on a double oh. and it's looking I've, good I've finish. got 3-1 City um, I haven't had the punt on it but I've, I've got 3-1 City Could be a perfect week or two weeks for City. This Arsenal, Liverpool, both out the Champions League and out the out the title race. Good sub, Doki making an impact straight away. Yeah, it's been lively since he come on. I'm I'm actually open. I'm wrong, and it doesn't go two or three one, and we get an extra time and uh, pens here. I'd love to see extra time and pens. But... My one one looking good here. Under two and a half goals is looking good for the next 14 minutes. Just got to hope what happens. Yeah, on it's the night city fans here. have come alive. But as I say to you, um, as loud as that is, it, that is just not a cauldron, the main man. Like, yeah. like Anfield becomes a cauldron. I just don't think, I, I don't know, I, I, maybe it's the way that stadium is built, the, 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 the space between the pitch. Yeah. It just doesn't, it do, they don't seem to get them kind of fucking colder in atmospheres. Mm-hmm. Like, even Goodison, I'm not, like, Goodison can become a fucking horrible place to play because of the noise. Even if City win this Champions League, it's going to be irrelevant in the next year or so when they get charged with all these 115 charges. But it's not, so though, is it? Because you don't, li- you don't live in they're the not, past, you live not, in the moment. They're not getting charged because yeah. they've got the best lawyers in the world. It's just, it's a matter of time. They've, they've hired 10 
or eight of the best lawyers in the world. So whoever's charging in the Premier League can only use the ninth best lawyer. <laughs> But also, if you... They put the other seven on retainers so that the Premier League can't use Oh, them. my God, what a save. Kevin, But also, if you've won the game, if you're a player, if you've won the game, if you're, if you're a fan, you've been there, you've been the ground, you've, I know it's at Wembley, but you've travelled, you've got to the game, you've won it, you've celebrated. A year later, it all gets took off you. Yeah? Are you really the last? You're like... Yeah, but you're not you, taking if, their memories off me. I know, but if you've been... Men, the memories if you're are still meant liable. to pay X amount of money and you're paying people in offshore accounts and you're covering the books... Is it, is it, it, it's, it's like saying, well, if it's a testosterone or growth hormone, as long as I don't get caught for it, I'm not cheating. Do you know what I mean? It's like, is, is, um, is it, because it is cheating technically. Yeah. You know, if, you're fat, if, if everyone can only spend a certain the amount, the you're breaking rules. the rules. But it doesn't cheat, you know, maybe <laughs> just getting caught. What I was saying to you is the fella looked behind here with the bins on. I was saying he was behind Ancelotti before, he must be the team manager. Yeah. As a bit of a ringer for me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the rumours at Liverpool with the uh, with the asthma thing. Did you see that? Did you ever see it? Yeah. Do you know there was any truth Liverpool into that? Liverpool blood. Have any oh, blood? Absolutely. Uh, no, no. They blood. They Liverpool blood. had Liverpool had eighty six percent of the team. When it, I think it's only like eleven percent of the normal population of males has asthma. Liverpool had eighty four percent of their team on asthma inhalers because it's it's actually a steroid for yeah. your lungs. And, but you can only stay on it for three years, and obviously they cycled out of it after three years. So they won the league on the last year of it, or second to last year, and like, like they were getting exemptions for people using. So they had steroids in the system, but they're getting a medical exemption because they're saying it's from the asthma and they like, yeah. who knows what yeah, the yeah. fuck they were taking. But they were doing it. Oh, they were doing it. Yeah, it's documented. There was of a piece in the athletic. Of course, they were doing it. You see that team on the clock, the, like the team that actually won the, the league. The big, the big thing you've got as well freaks. about, um, obviously, the blood fella Ferrari who brought all the cyclists down, Lance Armstrong, yeah. Todd Landis, um, Guardiola's up. How is he? Was in Barcelona. Was well, someone Ferrari? And when they when they opened the fridges, they found loads of bags of blood. But like all famous footballers, all famous tennis players, all famous athletes from Spain on. Yeah. And the government seized them and they were saying, tell us the name that's on the bags of blood and they never, they set fire to them all. <laughs> so the other one you got, if you go on, go on YouTube and look at Victor Conti in the Bolho Labs, who's obviously Maurice Green and Marianne, Marianne Jones. And he talked, he got collared by the authorities and he said to them, instead of putting me in jail, I'll come and work for you and I'll show you how to catch the people because the, the, the drugs cheats are way ahead because the best yeah. scientists get paid more money than yeah, the drug yeah. testers. Yeah. And um, Victor Conti said, don't yes. put me in jail, I'll come and work for you. And they, they refused and they put him in jail. And he said, the reason he did it is, I'd have brought every single household name, every single fucking superstar in America down. Yeah. He got collar for Bar Barry Bonds and a few others and Sean Maguire, the baseball players. But there was a load of athletes went down, the two biggest ones, Marianne Jones and obviously Maurice Screen. And he was giving yeah. them, it was called the clear. So he'd give them all the drugs, and then when he knew they were going to be tested, he gave them this substance, and it just made them undetectable. Yeah. What because was the, oh, so Roy, didn't Roy, Roy Keane come out? One hundred percent. Roy Keane and Gary Neville. Roy Keane come out and said, was, oh, it, "Was it Juve? That's a big Fancy chance. There, don't you? Was it the Roy Juve Keane, team? Yeah, they in the do, Champions that, that League. That was on the um, on the on the pod, What's that podcast called? They do with the, the fucking Tovan woman. <laughs> the overlap. Uh, the overlap. Um, yeah, it was on there, and they've been beat. But we all know, like Pep Guardiola failed to. Two tests in Brescia for Nandalo. How's he not scored there, by the way? Pep Pep failed drug test twice in Nandalo. So if you've done that as a player, are you gonna are you gonna stop your team from doing it? Have you felt the benefits? No. Didn't Pep come uh, come into City when he was a player? Yeah, he was he was he came on trial when I was there, but he, he then yeah. signed we never signed him. He went back out, I think, to Brescia and then went to a team in Mexico with Juan Manuel Lilo, who was his manager, who's his assistant. And he'd failed uh, two tests in, in Spain. Fernandolo, yeah. which is a performance and answer. Don't forget, you had Yapstam, you had Edgar Davids, you had loads go down. Yapstam. You had, I always remember Colacini, Fernando. Uh, Fabrizio. Uh, was, Fabrizio was at um, AC Milan. He, he went from San Lorenzo to AC Milan. And he said every Thursday there was a massive queue outside the doctor's office for vitamin injections. Yeah. And he said it was Nesta, Costa Curta, Seedorf, all the ones in Zaghi all played till they were like 47, Maldini. Yeah. yeah. And they were vitamin injections. I told, did they tell you the story about Michael Owen in the World Cup? No. About the doctor who was in, in the 98 World Cup. He said there was a doctor who was with them, a French or doctor who was giving them vitamin injections. And he said the first game, like hardly anyone got them. Second game, because you were a bit tired, we got them. And there was like three lads who got them and was like, oh my God, that's fucking unbelievable. We just couldn't stop running. 
So obviously the, the third game, then a few more got them and all came back and was like, that's unbelievable. So Michael said, I got one for the quarter final at the Argentina game. Yeah. And he said, I just felt like I had sprint without getting tired. I was just sprinting and I just Living didn't get pill. tired. And what was right? it? I don't know. We got a vitamin injection. So vitamin what happened injection? then is England get knocked out on penalties. Obviously Beckham <coughs> got sent off. England lose on penalties. David Batty missed the, missed the one, didn't he? The big pen. Yeah. All right. Straight down the middle. So they come back to Liverpool. I think Gerard Doulier was the manager at the time. And, and they've all gone, listen, we need to get this doctor in. I don't know what. So Liverpool end up hiding this doctor from France. And he come in that pre-season, he said. And he, he, he said, can we have the same vitamin injection? And he said, I got it that pre-season. And he said, whatever he gave me in France in the competition was not, not what he gave same. me yeah. at Liverpool. He said, it just didn't have the effect. He said, the stuff he gave me in fucking France in the World Cup, I couldn't stop running. Mm. So, of course it's there. Yeah. Hans muller Wolfart, the fucking doctor who in injects fucking horse plasma and all these different things into athletes. If you get an hamstring injury, it's meant to take eight weeks to get you back, back in two. Is the fucking Bayern Munich doctor. If you go to see muller Wolfart, his clinic's in fucking Munich. He's their doctor. You have to go in to see him if you're a and, and I've, I've heard of all superstars in the UK who've gone to see him and they say you're sitting in the waiting room and the Bayern Munich lad just walk in with the trackies on and just jump just the queue straight up. in yeah. and he gives you fucking all kinds of go faster juice Yeah. Mourinho and Chelsea had the blood spinning when they were spinning the blood and Pog was just being done only for stead so Pog was just gone under like, you probably want to get him out because he's a cunt Rio anyway. Ferdinand why did Rio miss that test what? Yeah. if you've yeah. only got a bit of weed in your system or yeah. you've got a bit of Charlie in your system you can, you know, mm. what's he had in his system? What, yeah. Why is he like? What's he had in his system to? Because I've been on them drug testing things. You can't escape them. Like the fucking, they come in the showers with you. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Stand next, you don't like do the, much. The with you. So you have to actively shake them off. And then the minute you've left them, someone's going, "Where the fuck's he?" Like so, the only reason you run from them is if you're worried about what's in your system. Mm. You don't run from them unless you've been up to no good. Yeah. Um, and then I always remember Alan Smith at Man United, a Leeds player, Man United, Newcastle. Smudger said to me, Cristiano Ronaldo, he said, I played, we played with him for a year. He said, he went away one summer, back to when he wasn't a European Championship, he went back to Madeira. He said, he came back eight weeks later, transformed. And I said to him, what the fucking hell have you been doing? He said, he was just fucking cut from marble. Yeah. He, wasn't Sounds that like me, he said, he was in shape before he went. He said, when he came Sounds back, like he was in a fucking completely different spot and he's a workaholic and must have been on the Smudger, I've just been swimming I've just been swimming every day swimming every day Smudger was like swimming Smudger was like swimming in fucking steroids Smudger was like and, and, and then it coincided with him just going into fucking another couple of orbits yeah. and, you know if, if you're a player and you're worth tens of millions and you can get a really good scientist have you seen Icarus? Have you watched the Netflix yeah, documentary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even what you were saying before about Marie Screen and, and, and the athletes, obviously, it's about getting to the, the pinnacle the, of your sport. You the get Victor the, Conti one's really yeah. interesting. You can understand why it happens in football because you know when you're playing, you, your ego, you want to be the best. So, so let's just think of it. The golfers were taking beta blockers to, to block out the nerves, all right? All the Olympic athletes are fucking at it, the bang at it. Hence, you know, you go back to the fucking the East German women, the weightlifters who are all now men because they got that much testosterone and the Soviets who were all turned into fellas and got beards because they got that much fucking go faster juice in them when they were uh, competing. So we know the Olympics are tainted because every fucking household name you can go through them is fucking tainted from the Olympics. You know, the amount of people who fail there, boxing, well, Canelo, Tyson Fury, you know, Deontay Wilder, who else fucking... Every fucking boxer um, who's just gone, who's just come back now. The fellow who was saying in Portugal when we were out there, uh, Dillian White. Mm. You know, so we're looking at cycling, bent. Yeah, Olympics, pretty much every sport no bent. Um, golfers have done it with the beta blockers. You go through all the sports, right? Tennis player, go through every, and then you go, oh no, football, no, won't be fo football, won't be doing anything. Fo no, there'll be no, that'd be clean. Yeah, yeah. Get to <laughs> no chance. With the sums involved and the money involved. Yeah, no chance. And it's the pinnacle sport. And you it? think how much they cheat and they cut the books and they fucking try and get financial angles and rob staff. Liverpool hiring the guy from Man City who robbed all the scouting database and they got mm. fined mm. five million quid. Mm. Um, it's people when people go on about like the medical companies, Pfizer. 
Why does it have the record amount of fines? It's like in the f like five, six, but seven also billion. Re also record profits. But what it's seen, seen as people who help you get healthy when actually they've paid out billions of pounds of uh, the fines, fines for fucking making people unhealthy. Yeah. Like it's really interesting for me now whether actually. Um, uh, they actually end up having a day of reckoning on this COVID because clearly it's not stopped transmission. It's it's caused some people to have adverse reactions to it, and it's you know you had people on the TV and people. You look at people playing football. The amount of people who were dropping. Yeah, they, you know, yeah. I mean, you see that you see that more so now than ever. Um, but again, it like the thing is. They tend to just whitewash the fucking and the fact yeah, that Yeah, no, it's sad. It's sound. It's sound. Nothing to worry about. Well, uh, did you not see the thing I, I tweeted this morning? They're saying uh, so. It was last last week. It was too much sun can cause heart attacks. This going to fucking crack it up. This. So today, I'll have to get this up. It's only because a, a guy I know put it up. There's a doctor who's um, having murder over this. Um, Real Madrid are the counting model. their own half and hanging on here. There's on. trying to hit on the counter, aren't they? Yeah, it's yellow. Dude. This is the best dude you've ever fuck. seen. Stomo so yellow. last week it was fresh air, sunlight, etc. can increase your risk of heart disease. The glare of car headlights. <laughs> the LED, I swear to God, the glare of car headlights could be a risk for heart conditions as ever more vehicles use dazzling LED beams. <laughs> it's got to be on the Daily Mail, that. Daily Mail. Yeah. But I'm saying, it's like, hey. Oh, Madrid. Hey, Sad. it's nothing to do with this mRNA fucking experimental vaccine. It's definitely yeah. nothing to do with that. It's definitely something to do with car beams or sunlight or fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Like, and the thing is, Big Pharma has that much money and controls the media oh, that it's heavily. Easy, yeah. that it's, it, and control politicians and control the reg... Like, you I mean, could it, easily buy the way out of it. If you don't understand that now and you're actually believing that fucking nonsense... Then you need to go and take as many vaccines as you can and fucking it, call it's it a like, day. It's like everyone's wanking over Bayer Leverkusen and Jabby Alonso. Bayer's a big pharmaceutical company. Bayer was was and in and with the fucking Nazis and actually developed Zyklon B to gas the Jews. In. <laughs> that was developed by Bayer. And like, well, the hell. You know, there's no there's no reckoning mm. on it. There's no um. The beers are flowing. Everyone just kind of moves on and goes, ah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was years ago they were doing that. I'm like, hey. Yeah, read up. Apparently they've just been trying to uh, do three minutes at a time there, yeah. and Pep started kicking off, so they've done four. Hey, that's what Cambo just said. Oh, ah, oh, Tash, ah, oh, Tash. Just give it the other way. Back to time. Can I, we haven't I, got I, enough I don't space care on what the SD card here. You get you get massive benefit from over exaggerating any contact. Like Doc, who's away here? Yeah. How yeah, is not, that a fucking foul? <laughs> If he doesn't dive on the floor and hold his face, Doc, who's away? In the Premier League, an English player that has tried to stay on his feet. Any aspiring footballers out there, cheat like fuck. Fucking cheat, because these are a gang of cheating bastards, and cheating fucking pays you back. That's what you've got to... You, you neglected in your predictions, that Real Madrid are top shit houses. Yeah. Like, they get in these positions, yeah. you, you know. They yeah. know yeah. how to steal, yeah. steal time. Like, yeah. he's just won a free kick after selling his wicket. He sold his wicket, he's on a yellow card, and he fucking ex exacerbated any contact, and he actually won a free kick for his team. So, cheats never prosper, they fucking do. <laughs> These are the biggest fucking cheats in the world, Real Madrid. Financial dopers. These are the biggest cheating, firmer cheating bastards in the world, Real Madrid. Franco government, club, club. Did they have FFP in, uh, in, in Spain? No, yeah, they do, but what happens with Real Madrid? They, they take on the Chelsea. So <sighs> Chelsea and that are all just learning from Real Madrid. Whenever Real Madrid was struggling, they just sell a car park outside the stadium back to the council yeah. for 700 million. <laughs> and then three years later, the council sell it back to them for 2 million. They'll sponsor that. And then they'd wait and then they'd sell it back to them. Like yeah. it, and Chelsea, obviously, with the hotels. So if you've got a lot of money, like City have, City, the, what City have done, and I'm an ex-City player, and I'm disgusted at what they've done, but I can't blame them. I can't blame them because they've got enough money to do it. City have gone out and hired the eight, eight of the best lawyers for what they're facing, the charges they're facing in the world. They're only using the top two of them 
and they're just making sure the other six can't be claimed by the opposition. Yeah. By the opposition, <laughs> and they've said if this costs us a hundred million, yeah, we're not asked. we're not having it because they know the consequence of folding is they get the title stripped off them and they get sanctions put on them. Yeah. They get and backlash out the fans, they get fucking... Well, they just they might as well go, that, right, yeah, let's fight you with a war chest yeah. and let's see how deep UEFA, let's see how deep the Premier League's pockets are because the Qatari state's pockets are fucking very deep. Yeah. So they're like, OK, you just want us that much? How much are you prepared the to FA pay to take catch them us? On? Well, the FA are fucking... The FA don't know their ass from their elbow. Right. You know, that's, that's a fucking dysfunctional organisation, the FA. The fact that we've got semi-finals and everything going through Wembley says how skinned the FA are. Have it yellow from Free Tun there. You need. Oh, okay, what a tackle. Last what a tackle that is. No way he's blew the whistle there. See, this one is. Arsenal, gone. This, this, this. Bayern, finished. Finished. Bayern, 1 0, yeah. Game's finished, yeah. yeah. That's Arsenal season. See you later. How, what a tackle that is. How, how is that a yellow card? <sighs> like, I, I, this is what I think. Yeah, this, this referee has clearly never fucking played the game. Because yeah. if you played the game, you don't let Carv Carvalho fucking sell you the dud like that, and then you don't book Mendy for that. That's yeah. a fucking outrage. That's a yeah. and and he must be one of the best because he's got probably the biggest tie in Europe this fucking week. Yeah, yeah. and the fucking yeah. shit. <laughs> get ex players. Get ex players who've played the game to fucking referee. Yeah. These referees are fucking crap. And the more technology and the more stuff you give them, the fucking even worse. Yeah. Fucking VAR, they're ruining the fucking game. Well, that's what, I have a that's what happens when you let yeah. civilians into the fucking into the game. They just ruin it. Women and civilians, fuck off. <laughs> Carlo's right. How's that a yellow card? And now he's putting more time on. Arsenal. Found a way to shit the bed. That's the only thing keeping Tuchel going, because he's a dead man walking, isn't he? They're going to replace him. I made up for Bazaar, our mate out there, Auntie Barry, as one of his assistant yeah, coaches, yeah, yeah, so yeah. delighted for them. Um... Maybe Harry Kane wins the Champions League, but doesn't win a fucking league. Oh, that's a chance, that's you know. That's a chance, that back post uh, area where strikers caught Tuchel, short ten a season. Tuchel's gone, isn't he, after the season? He's, he's going. What a yeah, mad don't life. Forget, don't forget Extra he won time, a... boys. Might need to uh, go the off here. <laughs> don't forget he won the Champions League at Chelsea, coming in halfway through the season when he took over from Lampard. Yeah. <laughs> he took over from Lampard and won the Champions League that yeah, year. Yeah. Remember, they yeah. beat uh, City in the final. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go and have a Jeff first. 1-1, one, one, done me well there. Yeah, you were right. I, I, I was convinced City that would be over two yeah. goals there, but you're right, KG both kind of got back in the game and then I've gone, oh, do we really want to win it? But it, someone's going to have to win it in the to, next fucking half an hour. To be honest, I, I can explain when you go for Pep, but Pep, for me, when he has got the big games, I think he runs short of ideas. Like, as soon as he a City team sets on the pitch and the way Real Madrid have gone man for man with City there, they're at a balanced playing field where normally teams will play five, five, three, uh, give the one, the one or whatever, give City the overload, so they're one nil up already. Because, you know, it's just, on, it's just a matter of time before we score or they break shape. Well, but anyone who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, particularly Liverpool, they'll get results. Don't Arsenal have a graphic here for extra time. So they won't Sorry, press everyone. because obviously Pep's aware of that if I am. He's turning my stomach. At the minute, Beckham. It's like a big drive. A big drive to, to sanitise him. And he's getting loads of surgery, loads of facelifts. Yeah. And I'm like, he was a cool... A I like Beckham, he was quite cool, but like... They're starting to get on me tits. Yeah. starting to get on me tits. And especially when they're trying to make the son, who's clearly talentless. I ta like trying to make out he's a chef because he makes a fucking well, omelette. He's you can't make a fucking omelette. He's gone into the obscurity, and he? He's like, he's gone over he's to the Miami, though, lad. You've got yeah. Messi. To be fair, Messi saved his bacon there. Yeah. There's Phil Neville and the fucking yeah. turnips Fuck that were picked turned up before. Shambles. But to be fair to Messi, Messi's gone in and brought, ba got the old band back together from Barca, brought yeah. Tato Martina in, who, who's obviously Busquets. his. Ma yeah, Busquets, yeah. Jordi Al, Suarez, yeah. Jordi Alba, um, and obviously turned them around. They're sitting joint top, aren't they, at the minute? Yeah. Um, so it's pretty much like and think about it you must be smashing its head in because you've got all the Spanish speakers in, in. like yeah, think about it's a that. haven for them innit? think about Ronaldo out in Saudi and I know he's getting paid fortunes but like the lifestyle in Miami compared to Saudi Messi's really winning isn't he yeah 
Obviously, Ronaldo can't go back to the States, I don't think, because of the fucking early ape charge he's got on, you, on, on in Vegas. Do you think he socialises anyway? Imagine fucking Ronaldo going down at like, the pub for a pint. There's Ronaldo no doesn't go for the pint, lad. He no, just does he fucking sit-ups. He just does sit-ups and goes home. I'm, I'm going to make a fucking massive statement here. I don't think Ronaldo's straight. I think that's a <laughs> absolute smokescreen. From what I've heard, he's not straight. It's a full-blown smokescreen <laughs> with that Georgina Rodriguez. Bear in mind, the first kid was surrogate. Yeah. And I've heard loads of rumours that I can't repeat on here, but like so stuff. mad, mad, like mad people who've been at, like just weird stuff. And he's fucked like, in Saudi then, isn't he? Well, Definitely well, staying at home. Well again, again, I'm not saying he I'm not saying he might necessarily be down one avenue, but I'm like I do like when you look at him, like you wouldn't think he was a straight man. He doesn't look like a straight man, and again he's Portuguese. Sad. And like he he, he, he looked for me. He, I'm like, he could well be bisexual. And when I look at him, and the stuff I've heard about him, like, I bear in mind, I've got real knowledge in terms of people have said, like, people he's, sl- like... Dressing people, room talk. Dressing room talk, like, people who know what, and gone. And I and told me, and I've gone, that's peculiar. That's yeah. very peculiar. Very, I, very peculiar. I reckon and he even, just even when me. I, even when I read, even when I read the, um, the transcript of what happened in Vegas in the hotel room where he's, is the allegations... It fit in what people in the dressing room had told me. Mm. They told me he had, a, he had a punch on for a certain thing, and it absolutely aligns with mm. that. Mm. And then they said, "Who he's in? Uh, who he's in the back door action with is uh, the fella who was, who's always with him. Who was that? I think he played over here. There's a, there's a fella who's always with him constantly, <laughs> even when he's with his mate. Like, and I'm like, he's gone, but he's gone to Saudi, and I'm like, they catch you doing that out there, they chop your fucking head. Oh yeah. But he, he doesn't. I, I don't know, but he, there's something not right about him. Who gets a surrogate? Who has a surrogate kid? Like, so what does that mean? No, the first kid he has is, is, is a fucking surrogate, way, isn't it? Hasn't, he, hasn't he got two surrogates? And, has he got two surrogates and two naturals? Just go Google that. Any half time bets? Should we have a little go? Two yellows. A fancy pen. <laughs> right, come on, Madrid. Elton John was married. Michael Barrymore was married. There's oh, loads of, there's lo- Michael Gove was married. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury was married. Do you know what I mean? Don't forget. Don't think fucking getting married makes you not a um, oh, bit light on the loafers. <laughs> See you next time. Any goals? <laughs> I, I think it's going to be cagey from here because there's a lot to lose, isn't there, for the next goal? Um, I didn't think I didn't think these two would only put one one up after ninety minutes. I thought no. there'd be more goals in it. Um, just let me down there. See that that's the dark arts that people miss. Diaz there because he's a top defender. Has he took Ireland off? Oh God! Um, because Diaz is a top defender there. Before that, even that's even got into maybe an opportunity for Bellingham. He's checked him outside the box with his shoulder. That's why Bellingham's down. But again, really good defending. Before the while the ball's out wide and the ref and the linesman are watching the ball because everybody naturally watches the ball. Good players watch other players and fucking take them out before. An opportunity even occurs, which is exactly what's just happened here. Diaz recognises in a fu- in a few in a few seconds, Bellingham's going to be a danger, so I'm going to fucking take him out before he can even impact the game. Yeah. Um. Obviously, VAR isn't going to intervene because it's not a massively clear and obvious, but he just shoulder checks him right in the fucking chops there. He's still per- he's still per- uh, persistent with Akanji in there, and he's got stones on the bench. Took Haaland off. It's a big call, this from from the from the main man. He took Haaland off. Haaland off. That, yeah. yeah. For Alvarez. Alvarez. 
Uh, Harlan's clearly chewing because he's speaking to Stones on the bench. He's fucking fuming. Yeah. As you would be if you're the main goal scorer, you're taking off. And as it stands, no away goals. You need to win the game. Well, and also penalties. He's a penalty taker, isn't he? Yeah. So obviously, you know. But he has been shit, hasn't he, the last few weeks, Harlan? Do you know what? I thought he's been better tonight than he was in the first leg, but also. You know, is he, he shit? Got, I don't like he is. Obviously, if you look, if you're analysing him in tough games, though, obviously he's, he's, look, he's, he's a top goal scorer. His, but just what? Just look at his numbers. You can't be shit. Harland opinions in the chat. But in a game of chess, is he actually in, good at in football? In such an intense game, like this, is he? Can't be shit he, and score that many goals. Is he actually good at football? What's the point? What's the point of playing football? What do you play I'd football score, to do? I'd score thirty goals in that city team if I played up front. Shut the fuck. Glad I would. You just have to be in the right position. You, you, you wouldn't you get, get 30 anyway shots. Doctor. You wouldn't get 30, 30 shots. Through one game. You play for City, <laughs> you wouldn't get 30 shots in the season. Yeah, my dad's watching this. You wouldn't get 30 shots in the season if you play for City. Because people well, just stuff you I'd be out. in the right position. You just get I'd do what Haaland does. Not even get involved in the play and just go and stand up there. Let Bernardo yeah. get in the air on the byline and cut it back and I'd slot it. It's the same way people watch the UFC and watch the boxing and go, I had to fucking slip that jab and fucking yeah. overcut. And you don't even score 30 there. goals for Parkland. And you're like, shit, you silly cunt. You'd have been fucking knocked <laughs> out for fucking 21 seconds. Flat on your ass, getting wheeled out in a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Everything looks dead easy when you watch it on the telly, but I'm telling you, you don't realise how big, strong, fast and powerful these people are. No, They're no, fucking no. absolute specimens. Um... I'm always leaving Ireland on the pitch just because even if he's shit and he, he does sometimes not play well but he fucking scores goals. He has that horrible habit of fucking scoring goals which is what decides football matches. But Steve not... Black used to always say clean sheets stop you getting beat. They get you the point. Goals win games. Great having a great defence and championships are built. You only win a championship if you've got a great defence. But unless you fucking score goals... You, you, you're not you're not the real deal and and Haaland regardless of how many keep ups he can do or how many step overs he can do he, he consistently put the ball in the back of the fucking net which is the most important thing in professional football goal oh god but um, they're unravelling a little bit different, here, different, well, different prospect in it since he's made the sub I agree with you on that if I'm a manager you never take Haaland off but, and he's a pen taker. I would be shy. But since Alvarez has come on, it's a different prospect. And if the defence, that it's not, you know, Rudiger loves it is, Rudiger but loves a fucking it is, but a you, rough and tumble. You know, you're smaller from set plays, mm. so both boxes you're smaller without Ireland on. You've lost the penalty taker. Should they go to penalties? You've lost the goal scoring threat because no matter how good you think Julian Alvarez is, he's no, no one's as prolific as Ireland Ireland in that side. Nobody. Oh my god! Sixteen corners to none. That's wild. Again, he, he's obviously he's going a di- he's going a different way because Alves is a little bit more of a kind of false nine than a nine, isn't he? He's not. You wouldn't class him as a yeah, ste- no, yeah, a stereotypical nine. Hence the fact he's popped up out wide here. Yeah. Mm. I can't see how Matteo Kovacic is not better in centre mid than a Kanji. A Kanji, yeah, he's a good player, Kovacic. How the fuck did Everton have Carlo Ancelotti as manager? That's all I want to know. <laughs> because we had loads of money and they were fucking sp- and he wasting took, it. Yeah, really. absolutely took the piss out of you. He came, got weighed in. Did he have um, what, what contract for his did he sign? With probably the worst team in Premier League history. What, what, apart from the Charleston. What, what contract? Did he get boss. sacked, Carlo, or did he just leave? And James. James oh, and James, yeah. Um, no, he left to go back to Real Madrid. Didn't he? Real Madrid, he came from Real Madrid and then two years later went back. He didn't get sacked. So he stayed the season. That two seasons, didn't he? Yeah, well, lockdown. He missed ma- mainly the full best season. Best striker of all time, got a question. Who's your best striker of all time? In the world? Ever. Ronaldo, R9. R9. Not the gay one, not bisexual <laughs> Ronaldo. Straight <laughs> Ronaldo, R9. <laughs> what about Luis Suarez? What? Suarez better than R9. Best of all time, fucking... Suarez was good, by the way. Suarez fans. was good. Suarez, Suarez was is... Good. The third best player behind um, Messi and Ronaldo of our generation. Fucking shut Who's up. Who's better? Fucking Who's better? Be- better than who? If, in our generation, behind Messi and Ronaldo, Suarez was number three. Yeah. Thierry Henry. No, of our generation. He's the generation what, before. When did your generation start? That's our generation, I know. Yeah, I'm on about Thierry Henry. Of this, of this Messi era and Ronaldo. Wayne Rooney. Really? Messi and Ronaldo's era from when they come through, Suarez is number three. Wayne Rooney. Really? No, Suarez is better. 
Suarez is better than Wayne Rooney, yeah, you think? Yeah, he is. Fucking Liverpool fans. <laughs> he is. He's a man. Are fucking Everton fans? Suarez was good. Like, no, no, no he's more than he good. No, he, but I, I, I always incredible. say he was fucking brilliant. He's not Barca team. But, like, he's not even... He's not... He's not, um... He's not at the level of Ronaldo, are I? I, I don't believe. Um... I think he is. I don't think he's as good as Thierry Henry. As, as good as he was, I don't. I nah. wouldn't put him ahead of Henry. If I had, a ch- if I had the choice, who I could have in my team, I'd have Henry ahead of him. He's touch and go with Shearer for me. Yeah, I was going to say, what about Shearer? It depends because there was there was a couple of variants of Shearer, but Shearer was fucking incredible. Oh player. man. Shearer was fucking for, for incredible. For our generation, like, he was chat. the ultimate striker. Really. In the but the goals he scored, like... Batistuta, people aren't even talking about Batistuta. The goals Shearer had scored were, like, fucking snotters every, like, every week. The thing is, you've got to look at your team sheet. When, you, when the team sheet comes out, who do you want in it? So you can have Luis Suarez or you can have Alan Shearer. It's a good argument because Suarez was a fucking top player. Ron Suarez uh, Shearer a little bit similar to Haaland because you, you wouldn't disregard him as a tardy footballer. If, even... If, like as such, but it didn't matter because you just knew as soon as he was facing goal in the chat, Similar. that ball Beauty was from Suarez. Going back I, think, in it. I think Alan Shearer was a little bit better with his back to goal than what Ireland is. Um, but I think Ireland's quicker and bigger. So What's Ireland's best asset? He fucking knows how to put the ball in the Yeah, that, the that's a good question there because they're very, very similar players. Tevez or Suarez? Suarez is better than Tevez for me. But then, you know, if you speak to the people at Man United and, and people who play with Tevez, they fucking... I didn't think... I never, ever thought Tevez was as good as what people thought he was. Who's the best striker you play with? Me. Nicholas Anelka. Except, except for Anelka, sorry. Fucking hell. Um, yeah, Anelka was a player like that. Fucking hell. Best I I played with. Vassell. Sure. Andy Cole Fowler Cole, Coley was good but he was old Coley was good Michael Fowler Owen. was old Michael Owen but they were old uh, Verduk Mark Verduk was old Andy Carroll Andy Carroll was good yeah he was Charlie good. Austin Charlie was a goal scorer when I was there yeah. he fucking got us up that year Andy Carroll be boss again on the pod you know he's out in France isn't he so he can't do is he playing in France he's out playing in the second division in France I text him for the West Ham game <laughs> but he, he he comes back home on a Sunday he and he's travelling back to France on a Monday so I said any West Ham game on a Monday he's like I'm fucked on a Monday but we can maybe get him on a podcast, just a podcast but yeah maybe we'll just get him, him on a um, podcast no, no one will understand him uh, Alan Smith someone said no before, he'll struggle because he's on Moisey's staff so anyone with a job will be mindful of not doing it because they might get fucking potted for speaking to me do you remember that year he comes to, to, come to Glastonbury with us oh, Andy right. fucking didn't, like, see him, uh, didn't see him for four days oh boss the like, first day we're all on the aisle oh he's in and he's in back post as We'd well. We'd all stay in the same camp. He's in back he was bare, didn't back post. see him for four days. Oh, well he was done, just Walker. in the mix, just fucking Man, having it. You need to take back what you said about Walker there. He just snuffed out Vinicius Junior. Mm. Didn't go as well, he just absolutely mean? snuffed out Vinicius there. The party animal? Carroll, yeah, he's one of the lads, definitely. Why has Bellingham got cramped for England after 70 minutes, but not for Real Madrid after 100? Because he's got a free roll, just that walks to me? about. He's on his vitamin injections. Anyone explain that to me? Why he's cramping up for England at Wembley after 60 minutes, 70 minutes against who did England play? Because look, that's what he does for Madrid. Belgium. Just walks about. And for Madrid, he's 100 minutes in and absolutely... He, he's looked sharp since he's come on. I can't believe he didn't start, Doc. Doc, he's looked sharp. He made I the goal, think, I think he? it's good tactics. Like, you, you think about it. You want Carvalho for tea. And, and you want your speed merchant coming on. You could be I, I really Carvalho. like this kid, you know. I really like this kid. Finishes? No, the lad who's coming on for him. Yeah, I really like him. Like I think he's he could have been a fucking major player in loads of other sides. He's one of them. Been... He's one of them you were talking about before. He the six of them who, who I don't even know the name. Like Vasquez, fucking Nacho. Like if you look at you think who are they? But they're in the Madrid team or the or the sixteen look at every the arms, week. Though, look, look at Walker's arms. Look, gets an arm on the inside. Yeah, Dead. Yeah, good defending. People asking about Serap Joe. He, he was he was a skillful player up until the champ. He wasn't a major player in the Prem. Like he wouldn't he, he, he was a bully like a big bully in the champ. He, he was above the level, but he was just an average player. What was he like in training? He just loved Megan people. I was gonna say he was he like a serial. Just tried to make people all the time, yeah. But um, he was a talented boy. He had great feet, but like a five aside, he'd be much better suited to the modern game because obviously the contacts less. But uh, he, he was a talented boy. Like people get carried away with how good he was. He wasn't. He wouldn't be in my top 25 of people. I can name 25 people I've played with who were better than him. Um, 
But he was a talented kid. He wasn't. He wasn't shy. Like, but he wasn't fit enough. He was too fat. He couldn't. He couldn't really fucking run. You need to be able to not only play football and be Ooh, technically gifted, but that. at this level, you need to be able to run like a fucking racehorse. What was Michael Owen like? Um, he he changed his game. Obviously, is when he broke through, he was seeing pace and off his shoulder and as dangerous as any strike you've ever seen. I'd make an argument that Michael Owen, before his hamstring pulled in that Newcastle game, was as good a striker as anybody. Yeah, Ballon, yeah. Young's Ballon 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 Ballon. Yeah. As anybody. When that hamstring goes, and when, you, when, you're, when you're quick like that, you've got four hamstrings, haven't you? And if you pull them off the bone, you're never, ever as fast again. You're always compromised. Mm. Um, and Michael had obviously done that a few times, um, and obviously had to develop his game to become... And that's why I take my hat off to Shearer. After Shearer's cruciate, he became... Instead of being an off-the-shoulder striker and, and having that capability, he became a different type and a yeah. more physical back-end striker. And, and Michael actually developed a different part of his game, so he was a top player. I didn't see the best of him because, obviously, his physicality in terms of his physical speed had gone yeah. by the time I, I played with him. But I always take my hat off to people who adjust the game to still be effective, even though the physical you attributes, know the have, attributes have, have gone. gone. Yeah. It's great. And, to, and that's at the, at the highest level as at well. At the highest level, yeah. yeah. But you have to change your game, otherwise you don't. You're fucking out the game. What do you think of his punditry? Uh, I haven't really listened to that much of it, you know, if I'm honest. He, get, he gets pelted, you know. No, I thoroughly enjoy it. Like, Michael Owen? Yeah. Come thoughtly on. enjoy what, it. Because like a it's just not, value? Yeah. There's a comical value, but, you know... He's a bit... His tone's what, a bit mad, he's got yeah, a bit of a mad he just, accent. He, he does just say, say it how it is. He's mad. one of the rare ones. He you will say it, although a lot of it might be fucking... He said something mad. ...a bit hard for people to understand, but he Do you know he, what? He's a he big says gambler, it how it is. right? He's a big gambler, and he's a lot fucking... He's got a lot more personality in the... I used to get changed next to him every day at Newcastle, so we went... We were next to lockers. And he loves gambling. He'd have the race and post every day. Loves the fucking horses. Loves having a punt. And actually, he's a lot drier and funnier yeah. in private than what he comes across. So, in terms of his comedy, I see people having a pop at him all the time, and I think that's due to sometimes the tone. No, he said but he's a fucking youngest Ballon d'Or winner. I'm like, yeah, regardless he... of what you think, we need to listen to him because he's been a fucking incredible player. And he's not asked really. He's not where people are like struggling for words or just yeah, he won't agreeing. Be people, please. He doesn't. Be, yeah, that's doesn't what I, and that's what I enjoy about it. Apart from it, does make me laugh, but he doesn't. It is funny people, when please. he's talking about throwing the finger in the bin. <laughs> yeah, <his laughs> yeah. Watching yeah. It. yeah, it is funny. Everyone's going fucking hell. Everyone threw a fucking apple peel in the bin, lad. Who hasn't threw a fucking oh, can drink in the bin or something? Amazing. Yeah, like, who, who hasn't done that? Going, yeah, you know, he just knew I had the confidence. To throw. I was laughing. I know what he's saying, yeah. but also it's it's like you have to be there. You can't tell that story on. I just had the confidence to throw that apple. Do you, st- do you still do that to this day though? Every time you and you think I've got this yeah, here, you see the bin. You like. Uh, we have to open. I've have got the confidence to do it. Cupboard open to open our bin, so it's yeah, it's kind of obsolete. But you would have a go if it was there. First world problems. No, you would have a go with it. You don't put it in the bin anyway. You'd be like trying to get it in, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Michael Owen, what is The thing is, he's been an elite level player, so listen, you don't have to agree with all of them. There's loads of men on there. You go, what the fuck's he on about? But they've played. The problem you've got is when women are on there and you're like, what the fuck's she on about? She hasn't even played. What the fuck's she even doing there? Um, I can't wait for the day where they actually fucking. where they're fucking. Reality, the reality just fucking bites for them. And it's starting to come. You've seen it with Claudine Gay in the fucking Harvard University. DEI and the woke nonsense is fucking days and numbered. As much as they want to fight for it and they want because it's nice when you've got power and you've got influence, unfortunately, people are fucking waking up every single day and are realizing just what a bunch of fucking. (gasps) Oh, massive chance. The last person he wanted to fall to on his left pegger. What's he doing up there? Is that a corner? They're taking a corner short. It was just after the corner, I did out. Second phase. Oh, Tell you what. Tony, that's a big chance. He tried to take the head off him. He's actually hit the right. corner. He's just got to hit the target. He's got to bend his leg. Oh, and he's got a big bunion top. Car- carbon graphite bones and then no nerve endings <laughs> in his feet, and he Rudiger. He's clearly, he's got, he, he can't feel from his knees down him, lad. Yeah. He can't. Them carbon graphite avatars who are fucking dead fucking strong and dead fast, the feet are just numb. <laughs> Like that's why he just stamps on you and just kicks into you. Sometimes he doesn't even mean it because he doesn't know where his plates of meat are. 
at any given time in 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 re relative to the game. You could imagine like the playground games where he definitely weren't boss. You know what I mean? But Who? Rudiger. Oh, just roughs you up, him. Yeah, just roughs you up. Horrible yeah. to play against. Like, for you as a centre forward, you just he's just on you every like Chiellini. They're just on body the Italian body on body contact. Yeah. So that. At every moment, they're just harassing you, they're just invading your space, they're elbowing you, they're touching you, yeah. they're pulling you. And that's the game. And yeah. you can't fucking settle, you can't yeah. focus. Yeah. And people miss this all the time. Everyone thinks it's just about how good you are at football. That's a massive part of it. You need to be good at football and you need to be fit. But there's, that's why you see loads of great players who never make it, because they don't understand all the other nuances that go But into your brain it. needs to get you into that position where you're not getting roughed up for you to, to showcase your ability or to, to showcase your talent. It, it, you know, if I, if if I was think at, I'm if I was at an elite time, level club, I can if, score I, if I was at yards. an elite level club, I'd be actively encouraging them to get into mixed martial arts and jujitsu, mainly to be able to fucking understand how to control the space that they stand up in mm. and, and the lack of intimidation that can come. Because someone I attacked in the goat, you just say, "I'll see you in the fucking tunnel, and I'll just get you in a fucking absolute chokehold and put you away, <laughs> you fucking divvy." Um, and and once 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 you know like. Once you know you can fight and once you know you're capable, you can't really be intimidated. Mm. Because if they intimidate you up to a point, you're crossing that threshold of, okay, we're going to have a fight here. And it's got, and, and it is what it is. Mm. Um, but if you're a shitbag and you don't know how to fight, you can be intimidated. Because mm. you're like, oh, what's going to happen? And it's, it's the worry about what could happen to you. Mm. But once you're like, oh, what's going to happen? You're going to be waiting for me in a tunnel. Well, I can look after myself, so let's fucking... Let's, I'll see you in a tunnel in 15 minutes, yeah. you fucking ball back. And that bleeds onto the pitch. So that's why I was always OK, because I'm like, well, you're in a fucking knob. I'll see you in a tunnel. I'll see mm. you in a tunnel at the end of the game. Let's see how fucking chirpy you are. Mm. And, you know, most of the time, the intimidation factor's gone because you can resolve the problem. Mm. So, and, and I also think it's really important to learn how to use your body to grapple from corners and set plays. Um, but I would... Like rugby massively encouraged loads of rugby people bring in wrestling coaches and, and I can see why because the scrum and the contact. Mm. Football, a set play, the best teams at defending set plays are the most physical. Yeah. So watch the Italians defend a set play, it's fucking body on body contact. Like you don't get a second off them. My favourite defender of all time to watch because of how limited he was and how good he was with that limitation is Giorgio Chiellini. He left his fucking heart on the pitch and his soul on the pitch every time he played and he put his body all over everyone he played against. Mm. So even like when the ball's 50 yards away, he's fucking pushing you mm. and he's nudging you and he's... Doesn't switch off. He just invades your space and he, and, and he invades your frequency and it just it, it, it can throw people mm. sometimes. Mm. People go... Ah, fuck this. Mm. And then the next time you play him, they go, fucking hell, this nuisance. You're trying to make him run off you've, the ball. He's already wallop. beat you. Yeah. Like, like Diaz there, that's good defending. He checks Bellingham off the ball. Tony Rudiger's another one. He'll fucking body on body contact you all the time. Mm. Van Dijk. Van Dijk does it in a different way. Van Dijk does it with an arrogance of, I'm the fucking main man, you can't touch me. But watch the game last week. Someone grab hold of him. Put it up, Mateta. Mateta, Mateta yeah. Hold of him, like, he doesn't, he like, doesn't it. like it. Yeah. He loves he invading your space, and and it's it's about control, mm. and it's about psychologically violating people as well as physically and technically and tactically violating them. Mm. But psychological violation is also a fucking big factor. Yeah. People miss it. People miss the psychological. That's why the managers' press conferences, um, players' press conferences, everything is so vital in terms of the output of the results. Um. Liverpool, Liverpool, the, the, like, they go to that stadium and they know our fans are going to create chaos for the opposition. We're one nil up, yeah. And we've got, an, not one nil up, but we've got point one head start because mm. you'll never walk alone, get sung and the fucking fans are at it and they've smashed the coach up on the way in and they've set the flares off and... The players are getting a little sudden, bit like... You're fucking, discombobulated yeah. and you're like, what the fuck's going on here? Mm. And... If you lose at this level a fraction of a second of concentration, it can be the end of the game because mm. the players are that good. Well played, lad. Oh, he's in. Pull it, pull it, pull it. They've just looked comfortable, though. I like this Madrid. Camavinga. Took him from Rennes, didn't he? Ren. Yeah. Bro. France is good. Like, I only catch up on flash goals, league. don't really watch it. Like, you know, you know, but. Used to watch like Euro goals and all that to watch the highlights, but only like that flash goals now. The app you can literally pick up every stat on that. 
And most of the teams you go through, Ren, Ren are a good one. Loads of young players, they're all like 17, 18, 19, playing 30 games a season. Ren's business model, Ren have got a very wealthy owner, but they buy to sell. They realise PSG, Lyon, Marseille, San Etienne, there's bigger clubs. Um, so they realise that their business model is to buy and invest in young talent. Cam Vega, I think, come through the academy. Mm. Well, maybe did, maybe didn't. Um, and then do well, and then they pump them on. Yeah. Have you seen that Gurassi? Was, was that uh, Doku, yeah, yeah. That Gurassi is that stuck out now. Was, was he just, well? He's chasing Kane. Yeah. He's got like 28 or something in the Bundesliga. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? So it's like, when you think about it, it's like, if you can't become a big club and compete with them, Brighton, yeah. point in case, the Brighton are doing it. Yeah. Do. Yeah. Like, the problem you've got is, you've got to constantly keep air unearthing these diamonds yeah. because the big clubs just come and hoover them up. And Oof. it's tough to keep... Pulling fucking diamonds, pulling yeah. rabbits out of a hat. Monaco were good, weren't they? After they won the Champions League, they they for a while. I remember looking at the team. They were, they were oh, like they, they 17, went 18 year olds. Sold, Mbappe um, was one. Mbappe yeah, was one. They, they went and sold a load of talented uh, seniors and copped a load of money and invested it uh, into the youngsters. You fucked that up. Who's that? Thierry. Thierry yeah. was given the keys his, to that. And they had up yeah. Mencato, who, yeah. who's at uh, Bayern, and they had Fabs, uh, Fabinho from um, Liverpool, Mbappe. Fabinho, oh, yeah. Had, Bernardo Silva was there. Yeah, yeah Silva. Was, yeah. Uh, Falcao. Um, mm. the, if you go back through that team, there, there was a lot. There was the guy who was for Fafana. Oh, Badashil, he was at Chelsea. They've had loads come through. They went and hoovered up. They, had, they bought a boy from Lyon, I can't remember his name, whether Grizel or something like that, who was the most talented kid in France at the time at 16 or 17, like a kind of Arab-Algerian sound of name, but he's a French boy. Armin Goury or something like that. And they went, basically went up and hoovered up all the young talent and then yeah. give Thierry Henry the job and obviously it didn't work out for him. Because he's shit. The, but, well, uh, he was, wasn't ready. Well, he just wasn't. Well, he's got another gig now anyway, is he now? Somewhere now, isn't he? He's coaching he's, somewhere now, isn't that he? That Belgium fucking he, yeah, assistant yeah, manager yeah, or something, where he? But black on. people don't get opportunities in coaching. Do you not know this? Like, <laughs> listen to Darren Lewis at the mirror. The White York yeah. hasn't had an opportunity and he was an incredible player. The fact that he hasn't spoken to his own son for fucking eight years or whatever, like, the, <laughs> but you know, you don't get, get opportunities. Yeah. You know, Jimmy Floyd, Dasselbank, Patrick Vieira, like, like they yeah. haven't had any opportunities. Um, so we need to bring in a Rooney rule where we get um, only black coaches um, and only black managers. Look, if they're good enough, but don't keep don't keep got harping on about well, it. And they obviously the weren't good enough. Yeah, which is Nuno Espirito Santo, which is. He's Portuguese, but he's technically... Is think, he? He's the only black manager, isn't he? Is he black? And he was a keeper. Yeah, technically, I think he, he fought... But that's... He, he comes in, in, in their... Um, yeah, I think he is, yeah. I think his dad or someone's black. Oh, the, keep, the keepers fall into the uh, equal opportunities thing. They're a bit mad, aren't they, keepers? Keepers you're a goalkeeper. are bonkers, yeah. Bonkers. Um, Johnny Stone's on Kovacic, on. This would be a Kanji and... KDB, another Bruyne, another, another pen taker, taker, yeah. Wild. Surely you want Ireland and De Bruyne on the pitch if it goes to penalties, lads. That's just me. Is he trying to win it? Do them subs say that? If it goes to penalties, I want De Bruyne taking one and I want Ireland taking yeah. one. I'm just going to put that out there. But I'm also not the greatest manager in the world. <laughs> Pep is, so... He obviously fucking knows more than me. Fresh legs, last 10 minutes, Champions League. Champions. Yeah, but also... Kovacic, well, a pens. very experienced pens, player. You know, John Stones as well. Pens, yeah. Surely you're thinking pens, yeah. Who's going to be the pen takers? Bernardo Silva to take on. Alvarez will take on. He took one in the World Cup. Foden's got to take fancy, one. You wouldn't fancy Walker. Is you Rodri still on the pitch? Diaz. Rodri. You wouldn't fancy Stones. Rodri You fancy. wouldn't fancy uh, the left-back, uh, Gravidal. Who? Who? Gravidal, what Gua it? Guardial. Guardial. You wouldn't fancy so Doku. So you fancy Madrid then? They've got a few good ones, Modric. I'm just trying to go through Diaz. the takers. Who's going to take them? Bellingham yeah. will take one. Jude, Defo will take one. Modric will take Definitely one. Definitely stronger than Cities. Do you know what? They can it's close. Val no, do you know what? It's fucking... It's not... Like, Tony Cruz has gone off. He'd be a pen taker for Alvarez, me. Alvarez, Kovacic, um, Silva, Rodri, Stones, maybe. Stones? Yeah. Remember Stones fucking Penenka? I, remember I can't Stone, see Doku Penenka. taking one. Stones has got a bit. Stones Penenka, the penalty uh, for Everton against Juventus. Ah, he did, Doku, yeah. That was pre-season, though. I've never oh. seen take one. 
Yeah, Dalkin oh, looks like he just got up Dalkin. and twatted as hard as he can. He's like he's 100 mile an hour, everything he does. He's a bit Rudiger. like Sterling, and he, won't, he can't kick it like more than 20 yards. Like you never Dalkin. see him shoot from outside of 8 yards, Dalkin, because I don't think he'd reach the goal. Yeah, but he's got that leg power. <laughs> just hasn't got the technique. So lucky, that's a great block, that. Rudiger will just run up and swat him. Sure, he took one for Chelsea in a big game. Millie Tau. On. I didn't even see him sneak on. He just got tell. back from a naughty injury. So have they gone to a back five then, yeah? They've gone to a back five, haven't they? No, I think he's took him off for Carvajal. Unless no, Vasquez Nacho, is playing Nacho's right wing back. still on. Oh, Carvajal. Carvajal's gone off injured, lad. Yeah, you're right. Mendy, Rudiger, Militao and... Vasquez right back, is it? Lad, he's gone... Uh, like, Vasquez has gone to wing back and I think Farlan Mendy's gone to wing back the other side. Is that I that foul there, there again? Nacho. See the oh, Rooney's yeah, just made from across the pitch. I think he's oh, gone no, back three here. But Ram Diaz is on, so I think he's gone up three five two. I like Militao. Tom Numbers is in the chat, Joe. Is he? Tom Numbers. What are the numbers saying, Tom? He, mu he must have predicted for fucking What are the numbers one? saying here? Who's going to win here, Tom? Good pass. Yeah, I think these, they've gone to, um, he's gone to right back. Which is a strange one, Militao, because he's a centre-half, isn't he? Left-footed left -footed as well, centre -half, yeah. Left-footed centre-half, yeah. Militao left-footed? Had a left Militao in there and gone Nacho right back. But Got then who's going to cut in on his right foot, and he's obviously waiting for him with a left-foot tackle. Valverde. Valverde's a machine, lad. He's a good player, isn't he? Valverde, I guarantee you get the stats back here. He'll have done about 16k with the extra time tapped in. Oh, I'm sure I can check. I've got this out. I guarantee you he'll be the highest running player on the pitch, this Valverde. He's an absolute machine. Oh. Oh, get off. No, he's won the ball. He's not going to free kick How does he give there. a yellow card for Mendy and no oh. free kick there? We were away on the pro license and Croatia were there. Israel, Croatia, and Republic of Ireland. So Taunton, uh, Jelovic and um, Choluka, they were, we were sitting with, I was sitting with Nico Kranka, so we were just having a beer, catching up. Oh, you and, played um, with Nico, didn't you? Yeah, yeah and um, Choluka's the assistant manager for the national team. So I was just talking about like the team, going out, watching them training and all that. He was like, yeah, any time you want to go out. And I was saying to them about the team and what they got coming through. And he said... With so reliant upon the Holy Trinity, they call it, which is Brozovic, Kovacevic, and Modric. He was yeah. like, We're just, if yeah. they play, we play well. Yeah. Um, he talked about like Perisic and a few others. And I was saying, One of my favorite players of all time was Olic. Remember him? Ivica Olic. Yeah. <laughs> just a workhorse. Yeah. Absolute workhorse, <laughs> really. He could play all from three positions, but just run his plums Forward, off. Forward, left, yeah. center. And occasionally he'd catch fire in games and like, be technically good, but it was a few and far between. He, he but was the a one bit, thing he guaranteed you was 100% work rate. He was a bit like a G-Sung Park, weren't he? Like in some big yeah. games at Bayern Munich, that team went Bayern were good as well, Champions League finals and that. He, oh, he, 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 play, he, yeah. just, he just worked his fucking yeah. plums off for the team, which you, you need four or five in the team. You, you do. Yeah. As much as you need the superstars, you need the fucking workhorses. He's in far side if you get him in. Go on, Jude, you'll see that. In. No. Good tackle, to be fair. I hate to good, say this, but game. I think he might have been better off going, the big man there, with the outside of his right foot earlier, rather than waiting for it to drop on his left. Gar Vidal. Guardiol. 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 With the G. What is it? Is he Croatian or? Joseph, Croatian. isn't it? What is he? Is he Croatian? Yeah, he's a Croat, yeah. Guardiol. Guardiol. He's a good player. He's only 21. 21. It's fucking incredible, that. That could be me now. Me now. Yeah, that'd be a good podcast for Duke Lad. He's, he's a top man as well, so it'd be good to get him on. I had a, I had a Grew ball, up in uh, Croatia a, or Yugoslavia? Grew up in Yugoslavia and obviously Croat. He's a Croat and then moved to Melbourne with his family when the war broke out. Um, and then obviously he's moved back to Croatia since he's retired, but he's a cracker. Yeah. He was saying to me years ago about Klar and Dubrovnik, he was like, you, I, when I was in New York, he was like, you should buy a place out here, it's going to be unbelievable. And I was like, fuck off, dude, because it was fucking, I've only seen it on the news, getting fucking bombed when yeah. I was a kid. He was like, no, it's going to be unbelievable. And to be fair, he was absolutely on yeah. the money. But like, he used to show me videos of like, he'd go dynamite fishing. He'd go, I'd go, what? He'd go, yeah, go out with your mates. And he'd get dynamite sticks and go out on the boat and light the dynamite sticks and just throw them out and then just <laughs> and about a thousand fish come up and they just hoover them up and go cook them and eat them <laughs> like what like it's just it's a hell. different world yeah. do you know what I mean 
Um, Balkans, is it? Is but it I'm going to go out this summer. I said to Nico, I'd go out. I said to Cranky, I'd go out. And obviously, Chor Lucas gave me the invite to go with the national team. So I look at their fixtures, and I said to Dukes, I'm going to come out because it's meant to be incredible. Uh, the islands and all, yeah, all yeah. that. Uh, yeah. That's a cost. Right, Tom's come back with some numbers. Manchester City, 163. Go on. Real Madrid, 85. All right. That equals 248 if you add them together. Go on, I've got you so far. Right, 4-4. Four, four. So 44. 48 plus 44 equals 292. Tuesday, the 5th of November in Brackett. All right. Make it out of what you will. He, he's got this date, the 5th Tuesday, the 5th of November. Something's going to happen, isn't he? It's bonfire night, night isn't it? No, oh, yeah, so there's there's an yeah. election for in America. Yeah. Which will be but a bonfire also, if Trump... As also, Trump, as what, we, what we know is Guy Fawkes. Yeah. Guido bonfire. Fawkes. Guido how we could do with someone like that now? Thanks, Tom. Like we could do with a revolutionary. Um, was, was he do real? You know, got a knock on the door off the, uh, Monday off the Cheshire Police. Uh, knocked on my door. Can I do a voluntary interview for something I've tweeted? I'm like, what have I tweeted? They're like, we can't tell you. I'm like, well, I'm not going <laughs> to do a fucking you say? interview. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm not going to do an interview for you. Then I'm like, <laughs> fucking hell. I'm like, no, I'm obviously not. I'll get me solicitors to speak to you. I don't know what it is. Whether it's fucking soft lad, fine again, or. I was tweeting about revolution and Guy Fawkes, so I'm like, I know they've gone a bit draconian with their social media. The FBI and all that have been knocking on people's doors in America, so I don't know whether it's something I've said in jest and they've taken it seriously, but um, obviously I'll have to find out when my solicitor goes and uh, sorts it out for me. That's a sign of society, though, isn't it? Police are knocking on the door, asking <laughs> questions, and nobody just fucking come through your door and nick you and ask questions later. Voluntary interview, so they, they obviously not got enough to fucking charge me or... Like, but it's obviously I've pissed them off with something I've said or I've pissed someone off just for saying words <laughs> it, it, it could be a number of things um, who knows I, I'm tweeting that much at the minute it could be fucking anything so I'll find out in due course um, how do you think uh, free speech is going to go like over, over the I think, I think we'll lose it with Labour mm. because the left tends to want to control stuff a lot more than um, is necessary so uh, and I'm looking at Keir Starmer public prosecutor did any of you see that Wes Streeton speaking about what had happened in um, kind of Brussels and all like? So I think I think they're gonna. I think well they were gonna lock us down worse. They 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 the intention was to lock us down worse than we got locked down. So I mean we have to get rid of the okay. Tory government because of what they've done. But. I, 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 my thing is I'm keeping my options open because I might actually emigrate and go live abroad for a couple of years because I'm not sure. Either, either fucking party. I'm just genuinely hoping for a save, for a revolution, like in mm. some form or fashion. Like that, did you see me speaking to Tom Numbers? I was talking to Tom about why, why can't you just not just say, do you know what, fuck is all. See my house here, I own this house. I'm just gonna, this is my own country. This is now Barton land. And I'm not fucking paying taxes to you. And if any of you come in, I'm gonna fucking fight you with my army. Mm. Like why, what, why do we have to, why do we have to live under a king? And like why? They've let us down, they've done fuck all for us, fuck them off. Fuel system, you're bad to Become that. your own sovereign fucking nation. So like you just say, right, our road is the fucking Republic of fucking Banana Land. <laughs> and fuck you, we're not fucking, we're not fucking, we're not, we're not going by your laws. When we come into your country, we'll listen to your laws. There's yeah. the fella, isn't there, who bought the oil rig, did you not see it? He bought an oil rig and he's turned it into his own country. <laughs> no. I swear to God, he bought an old oil rig. And he's made it his own. He's made it like his whatever name it is. You can Google it. You find it. How to get a shopping in? He obviously, just goes to fucking the mainland fish. or fishing, yeah. But he's, it's his own country. Like he's under his own. It's, it's, it's got his own flag and his own national anthem and all that. He's just made. Right. Who've we got for pens? I think City have got better penalty takers on the pitch. It's a being fucking. They've taken the best. It's off. a lottery, isn't it? Why haven't they done the uh, bring an Aspilic? Aspelaga on the Chelsea keeper. He usually comes yeah, he's the pe yeah, he is, yeah. Penalty yeah. expert. Who's in Lunin? See, this is the this is the madness of taking Ireland off and taking uh, De Bruyne off. Yeah, I've got a fancy Real Madrid here. I've got the experience. You just look at penalty takers. You've got the City's team. What? Rodri, definitely. You'd have Rodri number one. Rodri um, Foden's got to take one. I don't think Foden will. Will He's you know? He's got to take one. 
He's been the best player this well, season. Well, not, step up. it doesn't matter. Alvarez is top one in the world. Your personality, your striking of the ball. Alvarez will take one. Alvarez Stones. definitely. Rodri. Stones, Stones will Stones. take one. Fucking get Edison on one. But he's Foden will possibly. take one. Possibly Edison might take one. You know. Foden will take one. So Real Madrid, you've got Jude. Would you have Kovacic Kovacic will take Does Jude one? step up? Kovacic will take one. Kovacic yeah, will take one. Bellingham will take one, hundred percent. Bernardo Silva. I'm not that confident. Those my five penalty takers on City. Bernardo Silva, Kovacic, uh, Foden, Stones, and Alvarez. No Rodri. Yeah, no, I think. Well, then again, right, yeah, Rodri. I, I think though. the same Maybe five, Rodri but without Foden. With Stones. I no, think Foden. Foden will take one. Do you think? If you're a big player, you've got to take a fucking yeah. pen, haven't you? He's, he's, he's in that transition now to where he's become I'm one looking of the at Real Madrid, go Modric will take one. Yeah. Bellingham will yeah. take one. Yeah. Brahim Diaz. Not confident in Bellingham. Valverde will take one. Um, Camavinga yeah. will take one, I reckon. <laughs> and then who, who, who takes that other one? Vasquez, maybe. Maybe Vasquez. Maybe Nacho. Well, we'll take stepping up as camera. We'll have a Jeff Ayres before this goes in. Who do you fancy on pens? I don't fancy City. I think City no, I fancy him today. Los Blancos. Camavinga won't take one. Mendy won't take one. Rudiger? Why? I swear I remember Rudiger taking one. Come on, Madrid. Any City fans in here? I hope it doesn't go well for you. Referee's done well considering he took a ball to the hooter in the first oh, 10 minutes. Dished a few yellow cards out. Kyle Walker? Did he take one? No. Don't have Walker on it. Can't believe Nacho's 34 and I've never heard of him. You've never heard of Nacho Fernandez? Captain. Well, I, I have, but I'm, I'm half he's joking. Had, he's had a decent game, the cats have But he's, play, he's played for Real Madrid forever, hasn't he? I think his whole, his Who? whole career. Nacho? Oh, he come through the academy. 34. Think. Did he come through the academy? Buddy, buy him in. Sorry, but he's one of them you spoke about. Oh, he's one of the main chains in who's just there. Yeah. There's always a few of them. Yeah. There's always a few. <laughs> Remember Ivan El Game? Someone just pointed yeah. that out in the chat to be fair. They're playing Hey Jude there at uh, the Etihad. Jude's about to take a penal. <laughs> the good point, Shrugs. Camavinga Shrugs. takes one. Modric takes one. Vasquez takes one. Bellingham takes, Alvarez takes one. Alvarez first up. World Cup winner. Take, did he take a pen in the final? Yeah. Two players I'm not confident in taking a penalty in this. I'll tell you F what, the Foden. old, um, the, the easel, easel, what do you call it, is it? Zoom. Easily, easily. Easily, gone down the street then. Two, uh, two players I'm not confident in taking pens, Foden and Bellingham. There's a big thing about <laughs> left footers, do you know this? The there's fucking there's European a, Championship right for England. Right footers have a, have, a, have a better conversion rate than left footers. Whatever. Tell yeah, me. Yeah, the... the the chat room were talking about that before. Right footed and um I've never missed a pen. I'm left footed. You bet I've seen videos of you missing a pen while you're on. I haven't missed a pen. I'll miss one pen. You gotta go for keepers here. He's had a decent game, but I would have you'd have to back Edison to be the better keeper. Hmm. In what sense? Yeah, I said yeah, if there's a lucky Woo! if there was the luckiest team in the world, it's Don't be looking at the chat because they'll fucking no spoilers in the chat. It's absolutely Real Madrid. Top right. So good. Incredible. Good pen, lad. I had a good Get pen record. Up and I had a very good pen record, you know. Very good. Mostly I, went I down the middle. I still think I'm the best pen taker in the family. No. By a mile. We can, like, we can test close. that out. Not even close. I can get tested. Well, I'm the only not one who scored it. Under the foot in three years. Like, <laughs> like, none of you only scored against fucking goalies who had denim jeans on and that. I think good. First round. They didn't, they're even, not even first round, still fourth round quarter. I was going in the, the FA Youth Cup. The FA Youth Cup, remember? What a player he's been. Yeah, incredible. He's going to stay for another year, apparently. What a player. You won't keep him, will you? No, oh. not him. Fuck Good see. save. Hard low. Yeah. Bad, uh, poor pen. If you're going to miss, though. If you're going to miss, you might as well do it on the fucking first one. That wasn't a yeah. great pen, I'm not going to lie. Good no, height. Wasn't. Good height. Not in the corner enough. Bad nice, pen. Nice for the goalie, innit, that? He's nice to retire, the he's too old. Nice for the goalie. Bernardo. Someone's half inch the ball. <laughs> they just volleyed the ball. 
Yeah, if there's a time to miss, your first one. Someone's got enough to jump at. Oh, we are. Oh, fuck sure, just throw another ball. I oh, know, Jesus Christ. Bernardo. I love him as a player, you know. Yeah, he's a great player, isn't he? Left footers, just though. Right footers. Left footers, though, lad, yeah. <laughs> just never feel confidence, do you? I fancy him, though. He's a good player. He's a top player, isn't he? Down the middle. Told you. <gasps> I'm fucking like Raymond. stood there. Like my God. <laughs> my God. <laughs> hey, he just stood there. No keepers ever like stand the there. That's, that call takes call bollocks, bollocks to stand there. Fucking bollocks to stand there. Called the first two pens. Oh, but after, hey, he's, he's, all, he's got his little bottle on him with the thing on. Bellingham next up. That takes bollocks to stand down in the middle. It takes bollocks, mate. Fair play. Right, left yeah. must, they, mu they must have had, because he was talking with that Asper, uh, what's her name before? They must have said, here you go, here's the. Because they always have a fucking running order for what you've done. Yeah. And they're watching it, they'll have fucking on, videos of you and saying. Please don't miss you. Nah, he's a fucking man. Fancy he's him, a major you know? player, mate. Major don't player. Like run up. Major don't player. like a run up. Don't fancy him. Don't like a run up. Ah, see you later. Lad, he's, a f he's, yeah, he's as good he's as he can produce. You like the boy, don't you? you I like love him. I think he's fucking brilliant. Can't not like him. I like, I like everything about him. I like, I like the his way attitude. he goes about it. Like he's in the Look what booty he's got on. Look what booty he's got on. Go and get that beefing up there. Is that what it is? Show the camera. Has he got these hey, fellas? Hey, I had them first. Got these fellas? I on? had them first. Yeah, he's got well, them on. Well, they've been worn them. They, exactly. I need to break them in, don't watch I? Your, watch your fingerprints on them. I need to break them in for you. Put a bit of quality through them. Um. Scores some goals in there. Every, the way he goes about his demeanour, I just think he's a class act. Like even the moves he's made to go Dortmund and Real Madrid. Oh, oh saved him. <laughs> saved that bad pen. Come on, my dude. Jay both Wallace Croats, missing the pen both there. Both Croats have missed in the same spot. Oh, there's not a miss. I can't be imagined. There's not a miss. Coming on, though, literally it's exact not a same spot. Pen. Not a good Coming pen. on, Tom as a sub though, with ten minutes to go. You're probably not like fucking into the game by then, and you've got to take a pen. It just fucking knocks me sick. I can imagine De Bruyne over that. He's, he's had a good game. Vasquez. I told you, if you're going to miss the pen, you're better missing your fucking first pen. Gives you fucking four other pens, and then four other pens to see if you can. <laughs> oh. Hate these run ups. Oh, 340 nice. games for Real Madrid, like, Lucas Vasquez. Yeah, how many of them off yeah, the but, bench? Yeah, how many of them for 15 minutes? Custodian. Come on, Madrid. Great Alan Madrid. Pen, lad. Great pen, to be fair to him. How's that City fan getting on in here? How are you doing? Will you stop helling all the... Uh, right in the corner, don't you? <laughs> right in the corner. Put your bellies down. <laughs> Foden. <laughs> Come on, Philip. He's a major player. Come on, Philip. Good pen, lad. Yeah. Okay. Want to see it for England, don't you? You want to see I some confident see pen takers? Wide. I don't want no, to see him No, he needs to be the central wide. focus down the middle. Don't want to see him play but wide. What if you get Palmer he's, in he's there? Not as, he's not as effective wide as what he is through the middle. Are you starting Palmer? Yeah, for England? Yeah. He's only fucking ninth, you know. I think he's, he's just top he's goal in the, the squad. He's just the top goal scorer in the Premier League. I know, yeah, but like... We're not starting him at the Euro. Well, he's not going to win a fucking sausage this year. And bear in mind, like, you've got some heavy, heavy duty players ahead of him. Good pen, oh, lad. Good pen, another custodian there. Good pen, lad. <laughs> that means that, that that's just, that's the last to score. No he's got a score here or the Tova. That's a great pen. Who is, is it? it? Edison? <laughs> I knew it. Honestly, I knew it. I did call her. It's not the way of shout, you know. No, it's not at all. I, he's not going to mess about. I did call her, by the way. But you, would you want your keeper? Would you want your keeper? Would though. you want your. I don't want keepers on anything, but would you want your keeper? Oh, oh, no, good Technically, I'm he's saying, fucking... would you want your keeper on no, the last never. pen? You wouldn't, but it's never. a great pen. But, but like, that is, that, that's just mad. I know, but you're like, you're like, fucking hell, as you come down to the goalie taking a pen for us. That's sick that he's took that. It's a great pen. We as said well, it as well, right though, to be fair. Right in the corner. Good pen, lad. He's taking a better pen than that. <sighs> he's on the last one. Rudiger! Is it Brian Diaz? No. Rudiger! Rudiger! Oh. I, I swear he took one for Chelsea, you know, in one of the finals. 
Do you know what? I, I like Rude again. I like the way he plays the game. Yeah. Are you confident? <laughs> I, I want him to miss because he's got no nerve and he's got no fair good mentality though. I, 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 I can't Edison, feel his feet. Edison hasn't got nerve on yet. Oh, oh shit. Oh, what's it? Penalty. See you later, City. No more trebles. Modric, Modric is fucking relieved, man, there. Carlo the cool. Ah. Oh. Do you know what? Real Madrid deserve it, though. On paper, everyone thinking City are the favourites. I actually think Madrid were the better team there. So, they've got Bayern. Over, over 120 Madrid minutes. Madrid played Bayern. And then PSG Dor Dortmund. PSG Dortmund. So, PSG Madrid, Madrid final. Battle of the oh, money. Battle of the your boy there. Jude, lad, look at him. You fancy Madrid to go on, and, go on and win it, don't you? What a fucking terrible night for English football, though. Nah, I fucked him. Or is it with Jude? Who's the fucking ginger there? Who's got the fucking little, little carrot <laughs> top in the Real Madrid squad there? <laughs> Rusty. Who is it? Right, what are we doing? Wrapping up? Yeah, I'm good for City. Good for City, but also, you know, it's... it's um, it's tough to go back to back European Cups. I mean, they made a valiant effort. I thought they were, I thought they were a shoe in to win tonight, but they just never really, never really got going, did they? Haaland. What a pen to win it. Great pen posting in, clip the posting in. I thought a tactical masterclass there from Ancelotti. Well, from the very first, yeah, it was good. Even the first goal, man for man, in the first ten minutes. But even there, why is Val like he, Rudiger's took a pen rather than Valverde? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like Ed Edison's had to take a pen, that was a good one. But like Haaland, De Bruyne, and like, I don't know. Maybe they're injured, maybe they're fatigued, I don't know. Um, Great that, isn't it? Again, it, it's, it's, um, City will be disappointed because I think that, that Madrid side there was. Like you've done the hard work in the burn about, you've got to fancy your chances of, yeah. of beating them at home. I think conceding the goal, I, I level with you here. I don't think Pep got his tacti tactics right tonight. I think a Kanji sliding into midfield. Um, I think Foden being wide. I, I just I don't think they flowed at all. Mm. Like they looked better when Dohu came on. Um, and I think they've. Let an opportunity slip here to progress through to a semi final and possibly after facing a poor Bayern, you know, you, you, you may well be in the final and, you know, a chance to, to be repeat winners. But um, you'd, you'd think Madrid are the favourites from here. Is there a bit of arrogance from us as, as English football fans? Because obviously we, we blow Man City and Arsenal's trumpets, Liverpool's trumpets, like the, the big teams in European football. They've obviously been schooled tonight by two big institutions who aren't at the best, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid. All right, yeah. they've got a couple of star players, but they've also got an aging team, you know. I mean, they've won on pens, so it's not, like, it's not like they beat them, you know, it's penalties, which is a lottery. Um, what I would say to you is their domestic competition is slightly easier and the schedules are easier. You know, obviously City have played Luton at the weekend, so it's not the hardest game. But usually Madrid will play fucking 12 o'clock, half uh, 12 on a Saturday afternoon to get an extra mm. eight, nine hours recovery when City will play on, you know, on Sunday. Uh, half five. Yeah. Like, uh, the Premier League don't really work it around where La Liga and the Bundesliga and Serie A really do everything they can to give their teams an opportunity in Europe. Mm. The Premier League don't. It's kind of like, no, no, you, that's your time. It's not fucking get on with it. And Liverpool haven't loaded 12 30s uh, this year. Right, we've got the next watch along. Next watch along, who are we? We've got the derby next Wednesday. Any of you going again? No, I'm not. I'm not going to that because we could get fucking. We stopped. could do the derby next Wednesday. Do the derby. There's no, there's no the MNF. No MNF. Right, there's so a there's Tuesday night. There's Chelsea Man U. All right, we'll do. No, them. sorry, Chelsea Arsenal on Tuesday, Perfect. but there's the derby on Wednesday. All right, well we'll do two next week. We'll do Tuesday, Wednesday. I I might have footy one of the days. I'll All have right. to let you know, but we'll definitely do one. All the right, derby well, could be the derby could be the show. Wednesday. 
Or um, to be fair, I'd, I'd prefer to do the Tuesday night game rather than the derby. <laughs> no, I'd love to get a bit. Gotta do the derby. Let's no. do the derby. No. Why? Because no. we might get fucking might smashed. Get fucking <laughs> from, <yeah. laughs> we might be fighting in yeah. here if we're getting potted after Chelsea at the weekend. Talk oh, on hell. Who are ninth? What are you going to do to us? Um, so listen, thanks for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the watch along. Obviously, became a bit politically motivated rather than football orientated, but we got there in the end. Um, as I say, thanks for t- tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for Josh. Thanks, Noah. Um, and we'll see you uh, either next Tuesday or Wednesday.